Canadian dollars for a fast transaction with the Sandy's Gaka Coffee. Download the Lemonade Finance. Welcome to the Ghana ICT Hub, a partnership between MTN Ghana and the Government of Ghana through the Ministry of Communications and Digitization. MTN pledged to support Ghana's digitization agenda in line with its ambition to lead the delivery of digital solutions for Africa's progress. In fulfillment of this pledge, MTN Ghana has committed $25 million toward the realization of the Ghana ICT Hub project. The objectives of the Ghana ICT Hub project is anchored on the following to create an ICT enabled environment for human capital and ICT skills development, to develop an ICT ecosystem through remote access delivery to facilitate job creation for national development, to provide a modern state-of-the-art physical infrastructure to serve as a pillar for the digital Ghana agenda. The physical infrastructure, when completed, will provide 4,000 square meters of space with the following facilities, laboratories for technology training and research, innovation hub, co-working spaces for tech innovation startups, tier 3 data center, conferencing facilities, offices and meeting rooms, commercial lettable spaces, gaming area, restaurant and celery facilities. The technology laboratories will be fitted with the next generation ICT equipment and applications to provide the youth of Ghana with practical training in industry 4.0 technologies such as artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, cloud computing, 3D printing, robotics, Internet of Things, IoT, advanced manufacturing techniques, cybersecurity, genetic engineering. The project also seeks to establish a complete ecosystem at the hub through remote access delivery to facilitate job creation for national development. The ecosystem shall comprise of MDAs, technology companies, startups, incubators, research agencies, leading universities globally, foundations worldwide, to create a community. 1. The ecosystem community shall bridge the divide between academia and industry and provide solutions to challenges in the key sectors of health, agriculture, and educational sectors of the economy. 2. It shall also run an innovation program providing mentoring and networking for the youth in tech startups. 3. The ecosystem community shall establish an innovation fund to support startups, research agencies, and other entities in the ecosystem. MTN Ghana and the Ministry of Communications and Digitization are championing the Ghana Digital Agenda for Ghana's development. Welcome to the Digital Age. <laughs> I want you so bad, I'll fuck like a, I want you I wanna say yes, I can't resist I want you Ooh, I want wow. you out for cracker I want you so bad, I'll fuck like <laughs> Have a goodness rich in milk and butter in Alpha Cracker. Yummy and deliciously crunchy. Alpha Crackers, simply irresistible. This advert is MD approved. A Jume Bia Yejuma. I was said the Awankas are best so much. Mm. 
catching or be worried about na be me be free. Inti ni adi papa be or be ya mau. Inti ni mama me ni na wa fanya kusi. Juma we di meka no kwa lo. Oye juma banka on va on on tomo. Metu ma kasi me di kubi be thousand pieces be ba. Metu me ni a profit be two thousand won. Obia me ni wa wun kola me. Saya me wa di mpona shi me kawa pono sumu se. Me sumu wo ni pemu. This is the hustler story. Ago Ghana, are you struggling to pay your huge rent advance? Do you wish to pay your rent on monthly basis? Then good news is here. The government of Ghana has introduced the National Rental Assistance Scheme to help Ghanaians, especially the youth, pay for their rent on a monthly basis. To qualify, an applicant must show proof of the following minimum requirements. Be a Ghanaian, possess a valid Ghana card, you must be an adult of 18 years and above, have a verifiable employment or earned income. To apply, visit www.nras.gov.gh. The scheme is currently operational in the following regions. Greater Accra Region, Ashanti Region, Eastern Region, Western Region, Bono East Region and the Northern Region. For further inquiries, contact 0551-341-515 or 0550-408-879. National Rental Assistance Scheme, making renting accessible for all. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty McBerry Twist Cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged for a sweet treat. Mm. Premium quality cakes baked with love for all, enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. Oh, McBerry Twist Cupcakes, simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. For this six uh, six hundred thousand Ghana cities for this week. It, it pass. I buy stones. I bring excavators. I bring preloaders. I buy big big. I bring machines. I have videos there. I am standing on the last sea defense project constructed by the government to safeguard the residents of the Dansuman Beach from the raging sea. Now to my left is the nearest sea defense projects constructed also for the same purpose now in between these two defense projects the land now occupied by the sea used to be homes playgrounds for residents here at the Dansuman beach and to my far right to what is the remains of a two-story building used to be a very popular beach resort known as the overmass one beach resort after that are about five beach resorts here too but they've all been forced to either close down or relocate due to sea erosion. Now we are engaging residents here at the Dansuman Beach to understand how sea erosion is impacting on their life. Later, I would also be speaking to an expert to know what the government and coastal dwellers can do to safeguard themselves from sea erosion and also to manage the harsh effects of sea erosion. Nikomi, a former professional footballer and the owner of the Overmass One Beach Resort, explains the impact of sea erosion on businesses. He laments spending over 600,000 Ghana cities to relocate and renovate his resort. Six billion for this six six, uh, 600,000 Ghana cities for this week. It, it pass. I buy stones. I bring excavators. I bring preloaders. I buy big, big, big. I bring machines. I have videos there. I, I spend a lot. It's a resort. So the government is supposed to help me. Because here is the Dansoma Beach. The whole West Africa. The whole West Africa. The biggest beach. DC. A poor crowd. Even the Easter. A poor crowd. 
the six match I put the sound I put crowd. Any occasion I put crowd, but it's not uh, attractive like uh, before. When people come right now, they don't have place to sit, where to enjoy. When they enter, they, enter, they are just coming to bath. It's affecting us. Painting a picture of what his resort used to be, Nikomi indicated that about five kilometers away from where we stood was a sitting lounge and football field where visitors used to play football. But today, it is all gone, swallowed by the sea. His business was not the only one affected by sea erosion. He mentioned five others that had to close down. Before we played football there, volleyball, uh, no, the sea is not coming, the sea is, is, is far. But because of the defense, so the pressure came to us. That's why right now, see, the sea is coming. It's chasing us. It's not anything, it's because of the stone. That's why, because you don't have access to that place. So the pressure came to us. So right now, it's collapsing, collapsing us. Look at my, my stone. It was far. This place is, is far, far, far. Look at the other side. It was a, 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 a resort too. That's the summer village. Here is a little paradise. Uh, that one too is a resort. It's far. So we used to pass here before we go inside uh, the, uh, the, the, the sun. Before we walk to the uh, uh, sea. How many hotels and resorts used to be here? How many hotels? We have uh, 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 about six. About six I can hotels. mention them. Yeah. We have... Uh, 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 I'm the Overmax One Beach Resort, DC. We have Little Paradise. We have Dansoma Village. We have Jack Kingdom. We have Abriwanana. We have Marseille. We have Soja Bar. We have a lot. Now I can't see any of the no. hotels you are talking about. No. If uh, we have to point their location uh -huh. so that people understand what really sea erosion is causing you. Yeah. Can you point them? Yeah. Here, here is uh, Overmax. The, uh, uh, from Overmax to uh, 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 Little Paradise. From Little Paradise to the Summer Village. From the Summer Village, we are going to Shatter. Uh, 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 Shatter City. From Shatter City, you are going to Sojaba. Then we move to uh, my right side too. My right side too. We have uh, Franco Nero here. From here, we have uh, Abriwanana. For everyone, and we have Jack Kingdom. Right now, none of them. They left me. Jack Kingdom, he left his own small rooms. He left me. By my own, right now, I have eight rooms. Four is working now. Uh, it's okay. The four is working, but at the top, it's not yes. But the one that is here, it's gone already. Aside from the collapse of businesses, residents are in constant fear for their lives and property. After relocating three times, Ruben Akapu has been rendered homeless by the sea. This is my room. It's me, somebody who a building. The sea conquer everything for this place. You get me plenty of problems here. I've moved like three times. If you look at about, about 50 to 20 minutes, 20 meters, you see the road. If you come out, you close that to the road. Uh, if it's about 20 minutes, you close that to the road. So I move about three times. Whilst I'm talking to you, I move about three times. Ni Amu, another affected resident, also shares a story. He called on the government to come to their aid and construct a sea defense. If you have here, she is fine. No, you are not. You are not. You are here. 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 You are to help manage sea erosion and its impact on coastal dwellers, Dr. Philip Jason Kwashiga, a research fellow at the Institute for Environment and Sanitation Studies at the University of Ghana, called on the government to invest in research and provide case-specific solutions. So yes, we have to look at case-specific, where it is possible to move people backwards. That should be the best option. Where it, is, it will be more costly, then you will find a, a, a better way of protecting the coast. 
and now we are talking of nature-based solutions. Okay, building with nature. That's, uh, can we bring in vegetation? Can we uh, put in some, uh, just put in sediments and all that for the coast to to operate on its own? Yeah. So those are the options that we have. But each one comes with its cost. Each one comes with its disadvantage and advantages. So what? We are asking for, we look at it integratively. Let's have an integrated plan for our coast so that we don't just get up, go in. When the community is crying that there is solution, you go in and put in groins. That doesn't supplement coming in. I would say that we need to do, to look at the uh, approach more holistically. What I see happening more is that having small, small interventions at specific places where you have not considered the ripple effect on other places. So governments should invest more on the research, in the collection of data to really understand the situation along our coast. So eventually we'll have a good plan, and an integrated plan for the whole coastline of Ghana. So that when we are moving in to do an intervention, we know that this has been properly researched and planned, and we know this is what we are going to do at a specific place not just going in to put groins, as, as is the case mostly now. And like the people are complaining, it has shifted the problem to the other side. So they, they have a, a right to complain. That Dr. Jason Kwashiga cautioned residents against human practices such as sand winding and other activities that alter the sediments of the sea. Uh, we should as much as possible as uh, coastal dwellers reduce the or if possible, stop the removal of sediment from the coastline. That is uh, something that coastal dwellers can do to help the situation. Okay, they should stop removing sediments from the coast. That will make enough sediment available for the coastal processes to occur without uh, any alarm. That was my interaction with Dr. Philip Jason Kwashiga, a research fellow with the Institute for Environment and Sanitation Studies at the University of Ghana. We spoke about sea erosion, a phenomenon largely caused by climate change with key focus on human practices that influence sea erosion and how governments as well as coastal dwellers can reduce and manage the impact of sea erosion without degrading the environment. I am Elliot Nweti, reporting for Ghana Web. <music>
to create an ICT-enabled environment for human capital and ICT skills development, to develop an ICT ecosystem through remote access delivery to facilitate job creation for national development, to provide a modern, state-of-the-art physical infrastructure to serve as a pillar for the digital Ghana agenda. The physical infrastructure, when completed, will provide 4,000 square meters of space with the following facilities. Laboratories for technology training and research, innovation hub, co-working spaces for tech innovation startups, tier 3 data center, conferencing facilities, offices and meeting rooms, commercial lettable spaces, gaming area, restaurant and celery facilities. The technology laboratories will be fitted with the next generation ICT equipment and applications to provide the youth of Ghana with practical training in industry 4.0 technologies such as artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, cloud computing, 3D printing, robotics, Internet of Things, IoT, advanced manufacturing techniques, cybersecurity, genetic engineering. The project also seeks to establish a complete ecosystem at the hub through remote access delivery to facilitate job creation for national development. The ecosystem shall comprise of MDAs, technology companies, startups, incubators, research agencies, leading universities globally, foundations worldwide, to create a community. 1. The ecosystem community shall bridge the divide between academia and industry and provide solutions to challenges in the key sectors of health, agriculture, and educational sectors of the economy. 2. It shall also run an innovation program providing mentoring and networking for the youth in tech startups. 3. The ecosystem community shall establish an innovation fund to support startups, research agencies, and other entities in the ecosystem. MTN Ghana and the Ministry of Communications and Digitization are championing the Ghana Digital Agenda for Ghana's development. Welcome to the Digital Age. <laughs> I want you so bad, Alpha Blacka. I want you. I wanna say yes, I can't resist. I want you. Ooh, I want wow. you, Alpha Cracker. I want you so bad, Alpha Cracker. Have <laughs> a goodness rich in milk and butter in Alpha Cracker. Yummy and deliciously crunchy. Alpha Crackers, simply irresistible. This advert is MD approved. A dream of the dream. I was said the Amanka saw the sum Obesomu <laughs> This is the hustler story. Go Ghana! Are you struggling to pay your huge rent advance? Do you wish to pay your rent on a monthly basis? Then good news is here! The Government of Ghana has introduced the National Rental Assistance Scheme to help Ghanaians, especially the youth, pay for their rent on a monthly basis. To qualify, an applicant must show proof of the following minimum requirements. Be a Ghanaian. Possess a valid Ghana card. You must be an adult of 18 years and above. Have a verifiable employment or earned income. 
To apply, visit www.nras.gov.gh. The scheme is currently operational in the following regions. Greater Accra Region, Ashanti Region, Eastern Region, Western Region, Bono East Region and the Northern Region. For further inquiries, contact 0551-341-515 or 0550-408-879. National Rental Assistance Scheme, making renting accessible for all. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty McBerry Twist Cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged for a sweet treat. Premium quality cakes baked with love for all. Enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. Oh, McBerry Twist Cupcakes. Simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. I read every single you thing. Like I'm telling you, I read everything. I can even tell who said this, who said What's this. What are some of the comments? Or by any ding ding. We are back on another exciting edition of Talk Attainment, and I am your host, Elsie. On this episode, we have here the beautiful Abiyana. Hi. Hi, you're welcome. Thank you, love. How you are look you? so ravished, and I'm good. Mm, thank I you. I said to you before the show started, I like your costume. Thank you. Your sneakers. Thank you. What inspired thank the look, though? Charlie, me, I don't know. Something <laughs> just happened, and I pick everything together. You just enjoy, enjoy yeah, yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, Abiana, what have you been up to? Lately, mm. we don't see much of oh. you like that. Someone is say, you are not monitoring. You must be. Hey, you are not a monitoring spirit. You are not a proper monitoring spirit. Oh, bye. Maybe. Hey. Yeah, cho. I was like rated fifth. Like my costume. You go to oh, my page, really? you see. Yeah. Ah, then I wasn't mm. looking. You see, your mind is somewhere else. I know, right? The people uh, that you were expecting. The red carpet, so you it. Oh, I did. I did, but unfortunately, not the red carpet you were expecting. So I wasn't there. What do you mean, the red carpet? I was okay, so there was a TV3 red carpet. Mm. Get up. But I, w I think I, I was late. Mm. So I passed. No, but I know maybe. Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, Earlier, I think in an, in a conversation with mm. Ephraim mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. on Ghana Web TV, mm -hmm. you made some statements that was it, is it that you Ephraim or United Showbiz? Mm. You said the mm -hmm. reason why you think you haven't blown is because there are lots of debt around your name, mm -hmm. and now that there's no debt been, around, no, you? you've been involved in quite a number of controversies here and there. Do you think now you have blown? Oh, mm. still crowd, but we just dropped. The funny thing is, we just dropped something, mm -hmm. so we are yet to see test the whole thing. The debt on which debt? No, this which one debt? is not debt. This you one see? is small, small control. So, uh, but there's nothing. There's nothing. There was something. Oh, you really? were trending. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell me you know you were trending. Oh, we know we were trending, yeah. but for what? Back to back to back. Charlie, for what? Do you know what people do for that? Oh, it's a, mm. like we are grateful in all things. We are grateful. The fact is. People that never knew me googled my name up. I was in the markets doing my promo. As she mentioned, what have I been up to lately? I think in February, I went to activate my Shika song at the mm. market with the Mokala woman. Mm. So as I was vibing with them, someone passing was like, Hey, Abiana, what are we here? I went to guide and out, out, out. So, in a way, he also met me in the market and I was doing something else. And he was like, Oh, Unti Unti Sao, a nice girl. Oh, like, you get what I'm saying? So, it's in a good way help but for some time mm -hmm. we were not seeing you in mental really yes 
on the panel on the panel yeah yo so i'm a guest judge so i'm not like a permanent judge like the other ones like the richie and then the um kwabna kwabna so you know that sometimes they need people to do the selection then after the selection then they take them to the final round so like i wasn't frequently coming there as often as it was so i'll come i'll be invited in to fill in for someone i'll be invited in to fill in for someone so That's rather it. it wasn't max comments because i was thinking his second comments made you not no, 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 no. come on the oh, show no. you heard his second comments i didn't right? hear anything oh, what did he say that uh, uh his time no in his time you see it, what in his time i was young by then mm -hmm. i was like 16. so in his time like how could i be a judge he was he was he was honest he was mm -hmm. honest let's just think about it that way so you, you weren't you didn't feel any type of way about it the fact that the fact that i was talked about by few seconds of a video and then they're using that to judge my character that hurts because if you know me personally you know that i'm a very nice person but i just don't joke with my job like give me a job i'm so serious on that job like i don't want anything that is not worth watch the criteria you've given me to just pass in so probably the way i will go through that process you will not like it by the end of the day is it what you asked me to do but aside the whole buzz around it you know forget celebrities are human beings exactly. too. did, did that uh, worry you in any way were you feeling down sad at a point when those issues were coming everybody up here not this that that trolling you know the, the funny down. thing like that was the first time it has hap happened to me me i was just blown away mm. by the fact that i paid no money to trend and i was trending for like one week so you were excited yes i was like i've never like i've never i don't know like effortlessly you read when you go i read every single thing like i'm telling you i read everything i can't even tell who said this who said what are it? some of the comments or by like name ding ding <laughs> Yes, and then I'll go and look at the person's picture. Wow. And then I'll, I'll come back. And, and I'll watch your picture. Then no, ma, no, ma, reserve me, dear. Like, it's. In, <laughs> oh, it's a contrast. No, yeah, no, madam, mm. yami, as you say, at least, yes, me, ni, me, dream. But, hey, fe, me, da, yami, as. Oh, my goodness. But, anyways, like, so I. Wait, I'm still not really convinced. We're not convinced that, yeah. that, that wasn't her. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, my family members were. My father, my mother. My sisters, my sister in abroad, she'll call me and she'll be like, Abiana, oh, are you sure you're okay? I said, Me, I'm okay. Oh. <laughs> me, I'm okay. And you're like, Okay, if you're okay, I'm fine. Yeah, it hurts. Mm. But from how I've been brought up and the things that I've gone through, and even what I've read, or how far I've read, or how far my knowledge comes in with human personalities and people's character and their judgments and their utterances. I, I've, I've got to know that when someone is making, uh, an, uh, like an, is making an opinion or stating a fact, it's from their belief. It's from how they were brought up, their values, what they hold. So probably they are pained by, by that, like they are scorned by things that happen to them and it looks like if it was them, it will be harder for them to even bounce back. But seriously, the guy cries, still so check up on him. He's like my friend. So you put close now? Yeah, like he's, we are cool. When I don't hear from him, I'll go and check. Kofi Kel, how are you? I'm checking up on you. Are you okay? So we do. Wow. Yeah. So it's not as if, like, I'm nice, though, but I don't joke with my job. That's all. <laughs> so what, that brings us, what's the most interesting thing? comments you've heard about you so far that's it that i'm ruthless and i'll be the ruthless there's something a lot of people say ever since the video went viral yeah another thing another thing hey my catch all many being then i'll never forget and what mm. it's gone i flashed it wow <laughs> it's gone it's back here i say people that do stuff to me eh? sometimes i don't even remember them I don't. I can see you've done something to me, but I don't remember. Because when I'm hurt by something, my brain just makes it in such a way that it's pushed like to the back. But I wear cortex nature. Mm -hmm. You not. You don't know. It won't come back again until something triggers it and then it comes back. But it's gone. 
moving away from that mm. uh, let's go to music and why haven't you really had quite a number of collaboration only to the fact that that's another way of shooting you or your craft mm -hmm. to the to the house. spotlight that's like one of the easiest way why haven't you really had a number of Aside um, Ochiame Kwame, mm -hmm. who else have you? And then now I have like Fame on, but even having Fame on, hey, was difficult. Look, collaborations are difficult. See, after you've even like made the song, and then if you if you have to promote it to get the artists to to be involved in the promotions, to be involved in the in the music video, it takes a lot. I was like, hey, and this is what people are saying you should do collaboration. Do. It's not easy like that. It's not easy like that to have someone who is willing to say, okay, come, I want to share my light with you. I want to share my energy with you. It's not difficult. A lot of people do it because someone like Famille, he shared his light and his energy and everything that he did was just on point. His vibe was clean. But there are some people, they are scared that even if when they share something with you, how would you manage that? Thing? Mm. For them, that is it. So it's so difficult to get collaboration. I just had one. And even to do the, to like shoot a video, it's difficult getting from here because mm. his schedules are so different from mine. So you mean, it's not like you've not reached out? Yeah, you it's, have. yeah there are some people, they, they will tell you, okay, with time, with time, with time, oh yeah, but yeah, we'll do it. Like they give you that optimism that it will happen. But there are some people too, they are really ready for collaborations. Mm. So it's, see, I've reached out to a couple of them, a lot of them. Hello. Would you um, accept or would you accept that Ochame Kwame, you and Ochame Kwame's Volgatanga girl, did you own the song or he did? No, he, he it's, did. It's his. Would you accept that it was your break, sort of? No, 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 no. It, it propelled me into the industry. It just, it shot me. Like, people that never knew of Abiana for the first time, they heard. But they didn't even know the face until I dropped my Adunle. Mm. So they've heard the name, Abiana, 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 but there was no face behind it. They knew that there was a girl on the record on the Bolgatanga girl. Until I brought Adunle, then they started seeing the face behind all these records. Mm. So it did like propel me in some way, but like it's not something that shot me to fame, no. Your kind of music, it has a unique touch. Mm. It reminds me of, um, Anytime I hear your music, it reminds me of, um, not to make your head swell. Oh, cho. <laughs> Maria Makiba, those, those kind of different sounds, mm -mm. you know, Wiala. Would you say that's like the tangent you are going, either than the, um, following the regular Afrobeat genre? Mm -hmm, mm, the, the thing is, eh, each individual have their unique fingerprints but sometimes because we want to follow something so we tend to bend and try and do things that other people are doing but if you know yourself that well and you look deep within you know that this is what makes me unique and then you try to apply it not everyone has the confidence to apply their passion like like or, or use their fingerprint like solely do you get what I'm saying so not everyone can do that because People are in a hurry. People are in a hurry and you don't know whatever. Everyone has their unique point. So for me, it comes natural. It's not like I'm intentionally want to do this. When I pick up a pen and I write, that's how it sounds like. It's not like I want, but I've realized I have something very unique about what I do. If you have your characteristics, so you can put those characteristics on the track and then when they hear it, they're like, this is an Abiana sound. But people don't know that one too so you have to know yourself so what's your category are you a, are you neo soul afrofusion <laughs> uh, wh where do you you always, they always ask but my base is high life like core is high life but as much as it's high life i have soul i know how to tap into it and then bring all the lyrics out or emote a feeling on a sound so because i know how to do that very well i can be able to blend this high life and bring out that soul from the high life so I always say that I like to call my sound the soul life. Mm, soul life. Yes. So that brings me to a question mm -hmm. related to that again. Mm -hmm. Are you towing the 
Wayala direction that where people know the artists but mm -hmm. they don't really know their songs. Oh no, 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 no. Because that's how it's looking That's like. how it's looking yes. like. You so are they don't... more popular than your songs. Hey, so my face is there. You but the popular. songs are you not are there. More popular than your so songs. right now, what you've said mm -hmm. is a critique for me. Mm. So now I have to find a way to let the songs go. So now I've learned something. Mm. So I'm willing to learn. So it's not as if I want to go the way Allah. I don't know if this that is how it's going. Mm -hmm. Then I have to now focus on. So it's something that I have to work on. Okay. Yeah. All right. I've heard you. And then um, let's go back to all the way back to mentor. Mm. If you have the chance to actually be on the panel again, would you do what you do? Would you uh, tour that same? trajectory what what she did the critique the comments that landed you in the media uh, whatever would you do that again see if anybody comes and sings trash would you still give that same comment again see i have a little sister mm -hmm. she, she says she wants to teach me how <laughs> i can be able to be nice and even pretend. in that day and pretend i'm a ruthless like honest person I don't know how to hide something which is bad, but I've realized that in the public space and where we are as Ghanaians, people don't like it when you're like, like, honest, bluntly honest. They don't like it. So I'm finding a way. Seriously, if, if I'm to go again, I have to like um, reconstruct my composure again. Yes, maybe I have to find a way. But it's not everyone too that will get it. But sometimes people should pardon me. Like, this is who I am. I can't, but I'll try to be able to be nicer when I'm addressing those things. Yeah. But did you ever regret it, your comments? No, that is me. I can't regret who I am. Do you understand? It is me. I can only try to alter some parts, but I cannot fully, fully say I regret. If I regret, that means God is so angry mm. with that. That's who I am. All right. It's interesting. I know the conversation is getting interesting, but let's take a breather. When we come back, we'll delve into her project and um, other things you might want to know about Biana um, when she's not on stage doing her thing or uh, being on the panel and all that. We'll be right back. <music> Welcome back. Um, you are still watching Talk Attainment. If you just joined us, and we have here the beautiful Abiana, we are still chit chatting about her and everything about her, actually. So, um, Abiana, how was your upbringing like? Were you living with strict parents? Were you. How was it like for you growing up? You people. You <laughs> people. <laughs> you people. Yeah, it was. It was I grew up in Kutubabi. Mm. Yes, Kutubabi down. Mm -hmm. And I live with my stepmom and then my dad. So my upbringing, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it was uh, like a uh, joyful word or anything, but it was, was, it was, it was what it was supposed to be. Mm. Because if now I'm here, it's because of that upbringing. Yes, so it was just what it was supposed to be. Mm. It was what it's supposed to be. That Black Sherry made that comment earlier. <laughs> Okay, so um, challenges. What have what have been your challenges so far doing music, pursuing music? Money, 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 mm. investment, money. Right now, my money is all finished. Mm. My money is finished. It's all to do promotion. <laughs> 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 but we are here to recoup. But after money is is, and then probably the right connections, because. In this industry, if you don't have the right connections, I'm not sure that you're making the right steps. You'll be making some mistakes you don't even know. And then information. Information. A lot of us don't read. We are in a craft where the business side of music is now becoming something that we have to take, like, we have to take, we have to concentrate on the business side of music. So if you don't read m music business mm -hmm. and you don't even know how to promote your songs or you don't even know how much money you're making on a platform, you're losing out. Yeah. So that information side, artists are so drawn into their work. I want to record this. I want to shoot a video. But like at the end, what's, what are like the business side? 
how are you looking at that that's i think that's where information is important so we don't have like much information even though it's in the internet mm -hmm. how are you searching for that information yeah. so like oh i just and said like i went to i think vgma did a royalty something so they invited share publishing to come in and i went to sit in because i was having a problem with one publisher and stuff so i realized that we don't have it we don't have it if you really want to read 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 the honest as a matter then later you go and make the 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 investigations before you see ah i had to do this i had to do this but so i think the information on that mm. if like sure you've been at events you've mounted stages you've been backstage you've been a number of places i can't mention all what through all that have you had any interesting encounter that may it could be um with your colleague it could be with an organizer it could be anything that has actually um uh, caused you to feel some type of way maybe you've been um i'm trying to look for the right word <laughs> <laughs> maybe something that has got you offended mm. or maybe it could be any interesting encounter whilst at those events it could be backstage it could be anywhere have you had anything like that mm. maybe i'm too young in the game mm. for me to be like something that's interesting to happen to me but for as i've started uh the fact that i hated that i was always put like like i'm always the first person to grace the stage that was what i was like ah, why is it that every time i come first i have to grace the stage first before other people come but i i accept that i was now coming so it's like oh yeah they will make the a you get our whole thing but it was something that i understood and then i i i i gelled to and then i understood so i've not had any interesting thing that like perked my imagination to be like i was treated bad or maybe good nothing like that ever been depressed yo 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 depression dear me that word it's not that i'm hearing it plain to you when we we're young we never had depression though. it's now now that we are hearing that word plain to you. Mm. but i can say that i've been down before because i'm a human being I cry lots of times. I do cry a lot, but when I cry, the next moment I'm up. I'm doing what I have share. to do. No, no, no. It's it I, sometimes me, me, see me, see me, so I forgot. Mm. <laughs> yeah, me, see me, Anasa. Mostly, it's about work. Maybe uh, I'm not doing the right thing. Something just be back at me. Like I was supposed to do this, and if I thought if I had this, I could have done this. You get that whole thing. If I had the money, I would have done this. If I don't have the money, I would, that kind of thing. Then you so more like more. anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What's your inspiration for writing music? Mm, it comes from plenty places. So, I can be sitting here and something will just strike me, just strike my imagination, and then I'll look at the thing, and then I'll, I'll start writing something. I remember Ibahi on my album, Alem Lilala. I was just lying down and I heard noise from outside. But mostly, I'll be in the writing mood and then something will happen. So if I like this, I was practicing on my guitar. So I heard the noise. And then when I heard the noise, I went. There was a little child in the kiosk. And then the police were trying to like dis dismantle it. It was in front of someone's house. And the person didn't want those squatters around the house. So they were breaking it. And the baby was crying. So the mother was just running. Hey, me bad that they want me bad that they want. So as she entered and she took the child, the child was crying. So it evoked the feeling in me. And then I started writing Ibahi. Then Ibahi is a social commentary song, which says that like it will be well. So I talked about a child crying, the mother didn't have money because the government promised them school and they didn't deliver the school, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. there are things that interest me when I see things around me, my stories, my, my stories, other people's stories. So it comes from all around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So have you finally landed your deep thinker intelligence kind of man? Oh, you're still married to your music. Oh, no, no, no. So they're, they're, they're married to their music, dear. Have you, have you, you, you know that there's a pattern with musicians. Some of them, like, they would not settle down to, like, letter parts. Mm, that's you, what you are looking at. I'm not looking at it, but see, if I find that intelligent man, eh, 
who, who will be able to take me on. That kind of thing. Amen. Sweep you off your feet. You sweep me off my feet too. I'm a handful. I'm mm. very stubborn. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm stubborn. I know I'm stubborn. Every time some people say I'm stubborn, then I say I'm not stubborn, but I know I'm stubborn. That so kind of someone who can be able to lead and that kind of thing. Because if you don't lead, you see, no, me I'm leading. You respect him. It's not respect. <laughs> I'll take on some decisions or on my life that I know that I have to really collaborate mm, and then consider that kind, of, mm. that kind of thing. I'm mm. that kind of person. I'm the first one. So you know, first one. So always we are thinking straight ahead. Yeah, it's me. I have to do this. I have to do me. But when you're with a partner, you know that it's a collaborative effort. Did you say you're strong-willed? Very. Very, very. If I say this is my target, nothing stops me. Very, very. So how has that been uh, in terms of working relationship with colleagues and even family? Family. Yeah. My family, they, they don't come into my music business like that. So. They never stopped you? No, no, no. My father never, like, they knew I would. Because, like, from infancy, they knew I would, but they didn't. They never saw that maybe I'll be the person in the family to do that because there are lots of singers in the family. But they knew that at least one day one of us would do something. So my family don't intrude in my life like that. They don't talk about my music. They they know I'm doing well and they understand. They love it. And then apart from that, nah. Were you that wild kind of senior when you were school? Because you look it. No 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 no. I'm cool oh. I'm cool. I was in Tapi. The only thing about me. Which school though? St. John's Grammar. Oh, okay. So I was in Tapi. And during their time, so they really had fun. I'm not strict. I'm not. I, I just go with the flow. I'm not difficult. But if I have to get something done, I make it like I make it happen. Whether you, you support me or not, I'll make it happen. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to your projects. What mm -hmm. are you currently working on for your fans after your little break? Um, um. So now, 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 I've released a song called Far Away by Fa Me and Famille. So it's Abiana featuring Famille, Far Away. And it's available everywhere. Just go and then search Abiana Far Away and then you get it. And so that's it. It's that's a love song. Oh, okay. It's a beautiful love song. Have you ever heard Famille on your love song? Mm, yeah. Yeah, which with who? I don't want to promote it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you like to pay my But like um Famia's delivery on the song. Oh Famia is good. When it comes to collaboration, I really, he's very I really, dope. I really if Famia is a like, good artist I love in general. This. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Famia and is anytime he's on a song, it it's magical. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he easily blends with exactly. the people he has, he's he, he knows with. the vibe that is happening and then he gives it back. I'm sure the song will be a banger. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. Already I'm getting Lots of comments from other people, and they really love it. In the run up to the VGMAs, uh, I don't know whether you had a discussion. It was the gospel fraternity versus the <laughs> secular pushing the VGMA <laughs> agenda. Uh, people were for Black Sharif. Those of, okay, let me not. People who were supporting Black Sharif were tagged as um, darkness, darkness mm. versus light. Mm. <laughs> Well, like, what's your take on this whole thing about um, uh, gospel arts, non-participation, not winning too much awards and all of that? What's your take on it? Mm, I think that we human beings like to put too much disparities between things. Music is music. Music is music. An artist is an artist. We, do, we shouldn't put forms to, to stuff. We shouldn't do woman, man. We, we shouldn't do that. Everything is an art. Mm. So everybody deserves to win. Okay, and then and there's there's this accession too that when secular artists go for events, they pay them mm. more than hey, you know gospel artists. That one, I don't know oh, anything yeah, about. Say, um, gospel artists need to come. Oh, God bless you for coming. Thank you for coming. Hey, but I'm not been ads, there. I've not but been there. But the secular dead. artists, they can pay them what hundred thousand cities and stuff I like that. I've not been there. This one, there. no <laughs> comments. <laughs> me, 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 so but what's your highest paycheck so far, though? Shall they want me to disclose it here? So that yes. when somebody is watching, you say, Sorry. Sorry. I can't afford you. Sorry, dear me. <laughs> David, David, David. <laughs> I don't want that. Please, I'm affordable. Okay, Come. where did you get your highest paycheck? I don't even remember. Hmm. True. 
I love you, but I can't pay your school fees. <laughs> hey, media general for one more highest paycheck. Oh. I please, I beg. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> That's one is management testing. When management my finance, testing, when yeah. my financial this and accountant comes to sit here, they ask because mm, okay. I don't know that the books they account. Mm. Okay, um, so we are about to draw the curtains on the interview. So yeah. you tell your fans your last words, anything you want them to know. You put your social media handles still out there. Go carry us far away, far away, far away, no one knows. So my new song with Famille Far Away is out. If you're watching me now, just take your phones, go to all the guitar stores, boom play iTunes, wherever that you stream music, just type Abiana far away and then you get the song and download it JJ for me and leave a comment and you're watching me now I know that you make us say hey you don't even know where you're going to find me but I'm on Twitter Facebook IG everywhere just go and type Abiana music A B I A N A M U S I C and it's together follow me up and let's vibe you know me me I'm here I'm your baby girl and I'm your favorite African songstress thank you for watching Follow her, she doesn't bite. <laughs> we draw the curtains to this edition of Talk Attainment. Um, we catch you another time. Till then, stay blessed. We're out. What's, what's it about the NDC that you love? Everything. I mean, no discrimination. We are all. A Jume Bia Ye Juma. It was said the Awanka Saube Sumwa. Ube Sumun, and Obe Muse Skawman as a scan. Human and Maya, and the Amena Wood. The Yan Bokrana, and the Amena Wood. We have a say or Baba, the Odinuko Squa. That's him. Canadian dollars for a fast transaction. Who just send this guy a coffee? Download the Lemonade Finance. Welcome to the Ghana ICT Hub, a partnership between MTN Ghana and the Government of Ghana through the Ministry of Communications and Digitization. MTN pledged to support Ghana's digitization agenda in line with its ambition to lead the delivery of digital solutions for Africa's progress. In fulfillment of this pledge, MTN Ghana has committed $25 million toward the realization of the Ghana ICT Hub project. The objectives of the Ghana ICT Hub project is anchored on the following. To create an ICT-enabled environment for human capital and ICT skills development. To develop an ICT ecosystem through remote access delivery to facilitate job creation for national development. To provide a modern, state-of-the-art physical infrastructure to serve as a pillar for the digital Ghana agenda. The physical infrastructure, when completed, will provide 4,000 square meters of space with the following facilities. Laboratories for technology training and research. Innovation Hub. 
co-working spaces for tech innovation startups, tier 3 data center, conferencing facilities, offices and meeting rooms, commercial lettable spaces, gaming area, restaurant and celery facilities. The technology laboratories will be fitted with the next generation ICT equipment and applications to provide the youth of Ghana with practical training in industry 4.0 technologies such as artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, cloud computing, 3D printing, robotics, Internet of Things, IoT, advanced manufacturing techniques, cybersecurity, genetic engineering. The project also seeks to establish a complete ecosystem at the hub through remote access delivery to facilitate job creation for national development. The ecosystem shall comprise of MDAs, technology companies, startups, incubators, research agencies, leading universities globally, foundations worldwide, to create a community. 1. The ecosystem community shall bridge the divide between academia and industry and provide solutions to challenges in the key sectors of health, agriculture, and educational sectors of the economy. 2. It shall also run an innovation program providing mentoring and networking for the youth in tech startups. 3. The ecosystem community shall establish an innovation fund to support startups, research agencies, and other entities in the ecosystem. MTN Ghana and the Ministry of Communications and Digitization are championing the Ghana Digital Agenda for Ghana's development. Welcome to the Digital Age. I want you so bad, I'll fuck like a, I want you I wanna say yes, I can't resist, I want you Ooh, I want wow. you, I'll fuck like a. <laughs> Other goodness rich in milk and butter in Alpha Cracker. Yummy and deliciously crunchy. But I can't resist you. Alpha Crackers. Simply irresistible. This advert is MD approved. Ejume Bia Yejuma. It was said the Awanka Saube so mwa. Who <laughs> <laughs> This is the hustler story. Go Ghana! Are you struggling to pay your huge rent advance? Do you wish to pay your rent on a monthly basis? Then good news is here! The Government of Ghana has introduced the National Rental Assistance Scheme to help Ghanaians, especially the youth, pay for their rent on a monthly basis. To qualify, an applicant must show proof of the following minimum requirements. Be a Ghanaian. Possess a valid Ghana card. You must be an adult of 18 years and above. Have a verifiable employment or earned income. To apply, visit www.nras.gov.gh. The scheme is currently operational in the following regions. Greater Accra Region, Ashanti Region, Eastern Region, Western Region, Bono East Region and the Northern Region. For further inquiries, contact 0551-341-515 or 0550-408-879. National Rental Assistance Scheme, making renting accessible for all. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty but very twist cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged, for a sweet treat. 
premium quality cakes baked with love for all. Enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. Oh, McBerry Twist Cupcakes. Simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. What's, what's it about the NDC that you love? Everything. I mean, no discrimination. We are all one. We love our people. If you are doing well and they think you can help do something, they push you. Hi, good day and welcome to another edition of The Lowdown here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Daniel Ojo. Today, my guest is a man who wears many hats. He's different things to different people. Sometimes he's a businessman, sometimes he's a sports administrator, and to others, he's a politician. Recently, he made a bid to lead the National Democratic Party, Congress Party, as its flag bearer. And while that did not go uh, the way he envisaged, we would have uh, a conversation about his general life as a politician and a civil servant of many, many years. He's done some incredible things in his life, uh, and we are going to have a, a delve into it and explore his life a bit more. Today, my guest is Mr. Kojo Bones, who is former mayor of Kumasi, which he prides himself very much for. He's also a former uh, director of the National Sports Authority. He's a uh, one-time uh, aspiring president of the Ghana Football Association. He's also managed Goyle in the past. He's worked for Adidas in the past. So, as you know, he's a man of many parts. Sir, good day and welcome to the show. Good day. Did, I get, did I get some of your accomplishments right? Yes. Most of them. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Um, have, how have you been the last couple of weeks? It's been only a few weeks since uh, the NDC Congress where you were aspiring to be the flag bearer of the party. Um, as we all know, that didn't go the, the way you envisaged. But have you overcome the disappointment? Have you moved on? Oh, yes, definitely. I've moved on. I was just resting. Okay. Because to be in the nooks and cranny of this country, we did 18,000 kilometers and it's a lot. Wow. So after that, I needed, I wanted to rest. Okay. And I've had enough rest. Thank you. So you mentioned um, covering this country over 18,000 kilometers. Were there things that were different from when you were growing up? I, I read that you grew up uh, partly in Kumasi and also went to school in Tamale. So that is right. Were there things that are different? Have things gotten worse than when you were growing up? Um, yeah, I mean, I thought things would have changed. I used to go to areas like Chiriponi. Sapsuku Tatali, um, Bomburugu Yongyo, mm. and all those places. In the morning, you see kids not rushing for the rush hour school, you know. It's a percentage of them that will do the rush hour school thing. The rest, around 10 o'clock, that you see that people must be in school. You see yeah. them walking about or following cattle and, you know, doing other things. That is what really touched my heart okay. because... I believe that at, this, at that age, you know, age between 12 and 10, it should be serious school age. Okay. You see them walking about. That is what really touched my heart because I believe that we should be doing something about it. Okay. Is, is, it, is it something that reinforced all the things that you saw that touched your heart? Did it reinforce your decision to want to be a flag bearer and to be a change agent uh, as a politician? Definitely. Something touched my heart. And there are a lot of things that Ghana is supposed to have done up to this point that we haven't done. Right. So that is what encouraged me to become a changed um, person okay. for the system. Okay. If you go to Rwanda, things are different. People always mention Rwanda. Yeah, because it's Africa. Okay. So you can't compare Ghana to Germany 
or France. Okay. All you have to do is do an African comparison. Okay. And it's rounder. Okay. Things are different there. And I think it's, it's a model that we can always pick here. And it's doable that it can be done. Okay. Only that we are not enforcing it. Many say our democracy and our politicians have failed us. I mean, your party's been in power before. There's been other parties. Is it a collective failure as a country? Let's, let's not talk about failure. Okay. It is, I call it indiscipline. Okay. It is total indiscipline that is in this country that we haven't enforced certain things. I mean, let me give you an example. We drive on the right, right, or yeah. on the left? Uh, on, the, on the right, okay? Yeah. Everybody's supposed to be driving on the right. You see motor bicycles, instead of moving with you to the right direction, they face you. Okay. So they go to the opposite direction. And that is, I see that as totally indiscipline. Okay. Because if you kill somebody, you have killed somebody, the law, you face the law. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that people don't even think that if you do that and you kill the person, it has be, it is fault. Okay. Nobody's looking at that. On a dual carriage road, on the right side and the left side, all cars, motorbikes, motor everything moving should be on the right side moving. And on the left side coming, everybody should be on. But you see that where you're going, somebody is coming to face you, a yeah. motorbike. Yeah. I see that as total indiscipline in the system. Okay. So the police is supposed to enforce that. So in this it's case, it's not the police, it's the, the government. The government. It's supposed to enforce it through okay. the, 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 the agencies like police. The people who don't know that is, even, that is even wrong or illegal. That is the thing. Okay. So it, br it brings about the indiscipline in the system. Okay. That is why I would love a situation where every student that is leaving school that is finish university or SS would do a two year national service with the military okay. for discipline. Two years. Two years. Not even one year. No one. No, normally they do one year now. Yes. Two years would do. Th that conversation has it's not the first time I'm hearing this. I mean people have people have mentioned that in the past. But there 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 are the other people on the other side who say even the military, which used to be the yastic of discipline has lost that, that, you know, reverence that we had for the military. They haven't, they haven't really lost it. I mean, it's the kind of training they give to the people. That's what the training they have. But you have so many bad nuts that have gone in there, but I don't think they've lost it. Okay. We can, we can revive it like the way the British do the Sunhurst training. Okay. That is what I believe that should be done in this country. So in the future, if you were to be president, that's something that you will enforce? It's part of my manifesto. Wow. Every student, you, whether you're going to do law, you're going to, be a, you're going to do medicine, you're going to be an accountant, your first two years before you get a certificate to go and do law, to go and do medicine, you have to come through the military training for two years as a national service. You think that is going to reset our discipline and, and, and everything? It's, it's not going to do it 100%, but at least it's going to bring us closer to people changing their lifestyles. Okay. Go to the ministry. People are supposed to start work at 8 o'clock. 11 o'clock, a scheduled officer is not in yet. When he gets to the office, what is coming to the door? Like, not my mommy, Harry. <laughs> not my sister, Harry, into the Dinocor Hospital. I mean, it's not an excuse. Okay. But do so, we necessarily need the, the military training to do that? Like you said, it's discipline. I mean, it's, 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 it's somebody who... You see, the reason why I'm saying military training, at least you pick the sense of it. Okay. You pick the idea that people need to, to understand certain things. And that kind of military rigor training will push you into that system. Okay. So you come to understand how we do the things right. Okay. Let's backtrack a bit and, and, and go into your upbringing. Um, you born in Kuma, you're born in Ashanti, born in Kumasi, raised in Kumasi, and then went to secondary school in Tamale. How did that happen? What was your childhood like? Are you born with a silver spoon in your mouth? Yes, yeah, so I was born family? with a silver spoon in my mouth. Oh, really? I lived at the presidency. Oh, really? In Kumasi, yeah, the Flagstaff house. Okay. Luckily, my mother, my senior sister, at that time, hadn't had a baby 
yet. So I was given to her to live, and the husband was the director of protocol to Kwame Nkrumah. All right. So I lived in the Flagstaff house, bungalow number four. I'm sure if you follow Ghana history, that bungalow number four is where they did the Kankan Yami. Oh. So I've lived there, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I lived a very luxurious life in a presidential way. Wow. Yeah. You know, people, people like you, they say you've not struggled, so sometimes you can't identify with the ordinary but people. I Is have that struggled true? a lot. Have you? Life, if, life. if you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. It doesn't matter. Life, it's, it's a long term. Okay. Okay. Breaks at points. Okay. When my father passed on, fine, my sister and the husband were still in top positions, and I really enjoyed that. But at a point in life, when I needed the most, it was like they were not there, and I had to start suffering, working hard. My mother died at an age that I had finished, just finished my O-levels, and I used to travel worldwide with my mom. Okay. And um, suddenly I'd lost it. So life... Was it a rude awakening? Yeah. It was a rude awakening? Awakening. So it's like a reverse. Okay. Into coming through a hard life. When you but say I, hard I really, life... I really enjoyed hard life, fending for myself. Okay. Making sure that everything is done very well for myself. This was around what age? It was around 1921. Oh, so uh, 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 almost uh, an adult. At 1819, I yes, mean. Yes, in Ghana, 1890 is not an adult. <laughs> right. I mean, on paper. Yes, you can vote, so we, we describe you as yes, an, adult. an adult. Yes, but hey, some of them, you need to look after them, make sure that they, you know, do yeah. everything under the roof of the parents. Okay. Yeah. So then you moved to Tamale for your secondary education. Yes. I mean, for somebody who lived luxurious in Kumasi, first option would be to go to Prempe or to go to Pokuare and all of that. How, my, how did my, you end up in My mother Tamale? didn't like that because she didn't want me to be seen coming home all the time. Oh, okay. They didn't so, send you away. <laughs> so she, she said, look, let me take... They have friends in Tamale, Loya Diaka, um, Abukari Sumani, the former vice president, Aliu. Oh, really? But, yes. I, I, so I stayed in their house when I was in Tamale. Like, I was in boarding house, but I go there for the weekends to go eat, go and have some like life. Wow. So, so that was it. I mean, I enjoyed my life in Tamale, my term in Tamale, and it was interesting. Very, very interesting. Many say it's one of the, I mean, cleanest in, in the country. I mean, you talk about the Volta region, talk about the Northern region. I mean, they're more orderly than the chaos in Accra and Kumasi. If you talk about cleanest, I'm talking about field. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes, I think that is better. It is better, cleaner. Okay. So then you moved to the United Kingdom? Yeah, I moved to the UK. Okay. To go and start hustling for life. In fact, <laughs> my main intention, the main intention of going back to UK was to go to school. Okay. But hey, I had to run away from it. So when you went to the UK, you didn't go to school immediately? No, no, no. I went to the UK in June, which was the summer, was holidays. Okay. And in, um, what do you call it? In September, school had, was reopening. Yeah. So I got a job, immediately I got into the UK, got a job with a company called William Shaw. People pronounce it call. Mm. I worked with them. At that time, I was, I was earning about 75 pounds and more. Really? Yes. A week. So quite interesting. So I put up with my brother and I had to run and find my own flat. So, so I was paying for it. So I was like controlling myself. I was a big man, which my, my, my sister and the husband were not very happy about. Why but were they not happy? Because they didn't yeah, think you, they, you were old enough to, to be school, independent? They had looked for a school for me to go. And you were, you were not doing as, as they expected I at that time? I didn't go. I was not going. Okay. But school reopened on the 16th of September. I never showed up. Because I was earning good money. Okay. But at some point, you went back to school? I didn't. You I never? I made so much, but I didn't. Wow. I didn't. 
But so you see, the, the good thing is about my life is I've done a lot of courses, diploma courses, management training. So that is why I've gotten so much experience. Okay. You know. But is a path you're not going to let your children take if, if they said, okay, I'm making money, but I don't want to go to school? I wouldn't, I wouldn't allow them to do that. But yeah. hey, my parents were not alive to push it. Yeah. You know, so that was the disadvantage I had. Okay. You're still on the lowdown here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Daniel Odro. Today, my guest is Mr. Kojo Bonsu. Um, I'm sure you do know him as the former mayor of Kumasi, uh, former boss of the National Sports Council. He rebranded it to the National Sports Authority. And we'll go into that. He also served on the board of Goyle and later became its managing uh, director, um, credited for, if you like, revolutionizing Goyle. He also worked with Adidas, and we were talking to, about that. He also, at some point, was a sports person, wanted to become the president of the Ghana Football Association, and recently wanted to be the flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress. As elections approach, we will discuss what the party is doing to recapture power uh, ahead of the next general election. We'll go for our first break. When we return, we'll delve more into the life of Mr. Kojobon. So stay with us. We're back after this break. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty McBerry Twist Cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged for a sweet treat. Mm. Premium quality cakes baked with love for all, enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. Oh. McBerry Twist Cupcakes. Simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back from the break. This is still the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. Today we're having a conversation um, with Mr. Kojo Bonsu. Um, and he's, you know, revealing some interesting facts about his life as a hustler in the UK. As a boy who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, but you know, as they say, life is, is a journey, a bit of ups and downs, and he had his fair share of both the ups and the downs. Mr. Bonsu, I mean, you've, you've accomplished so much in your life as a, as a Ghanaian citizen. You've worked at God, you've worked at the National Sports Council, later became the National Sports Authority. I mean, you've worked at Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly. Where, which, which is one of the things you, you, you are really proud of because when I went to your, onto your Twitter uh, page, that's, that's a description there, former mayor of, of Kumasi. Is it the job that you enjoy the most? Um, it's the challenges and the experience I had. Okay. That's what I really enjoy. You're a Kumasi boy, so you must have, when, when you got that appointment, you might, you might have you see, looked at yes, it and said, I Kumasi want to change. Kumasi boy, Kumasi. but you see, Asante, I was... Born and bred there. Yeah. And it's for my grandparents. Right. So if I'm working for Kumasi or mm -hmm. Asante, I see it as doing something for my family. So I dedicate and put up my all in it. Right. So that is how it is. So I wouldn't want to pride myself on Asante Niba or something, but the pride of being an Asante and also the pride of my grandparents who were born on the golden stool. Okay. So that prides me okay. becoming a worker or but a server. You credited with the Ratri Park, um, which, which was the first of its kind in Kumasi. But in Ghana? In Ghana. Uh, do you know its state now? Do you know if it's still functional? Oh, it's functioning. It's functioning. But hey, I, I, I don't go into it because I've left it, I've finished, and I've washed my hands out of it. So. I'm not part of that anymore. Your time at the KMA it was not without challenges. Uh, do you look back and realize some of the things you could have done better? If, if, if you say challenges, yes. But it also it helped me a lot for me to understand the people that I serve. Okay. So I serve them very well. Okay. And I see the challenges are normal, that you would go through that. If you don't go through challenges, you go through very smooth. That means you wouldn't perform very well. Okay. And I pride myself of being one of the best mayors Kumasi have ever had. Okay. On the benefit of hindsight, other things you would have done differently? Or you have done the same thing? 
I would have done the same thing even more harder. Okay. Because you want a better city and mayors make sure that cities are run very well. And that is what I was looking at. Okay. For a better Kumasi. The Kumasi today, uh, many say it's not the, the uh, if you like, the garden city that it ought to be or used to be. Are you, your vision of Kumasi when you became KMA boss, do you see you see that path now do you do you are you disappointed that it, it has not followed that that path um disappointment yes i'm very disappointed but the thing is that you cannot be there forever and the place is not yours every four years a law in this country is that we have to change the const i mean constitution says that four years every new system must happen yeah if you continue, that means you win. The maximum will be eight years. Yeah. So my mind was that I wasn't going to stay there for a long, a long time. The work and somebody would come and take over. Okay. Also, the thing is that if you left memoirs, if you left, I mean, reports for them to follow and they didn't, you can't do anything about it. Okay. All that you do is you pray that they follow the reports you left so that everything can be uh, good for the city. Have people they, consulted you to ask of your experience there, like those who have succeeded you? Um, nobody has it now. We don't do that in this country. We don't, I mean, you've said in that capacity, you know, you, you have some. I was doing it because I was consulting an Akosi Ajman. Okay. May he so rest in peace. He's passed on. I was consulting him and also I was consulting Mr. James Osu, he's also passed on, having a chat with them about Kumasi and how to do things. Yeah. So I believe that um, it should be done. If you consult and listen to the person, then you better yourself okay. so that you can handle challenges okay. more than not consulting. Okay. Let's go back to your time in the UK. When you arrived in the UK, were there, was there a cultural shock? Were there things that you saw that you said, why is this different here? And it is no, I'd, I'd been to UK many times before okay. I went to the UK. Okay. But the first was, time you went to the UK, for example? I went to the UK when I was a very young boy, I think in 64. Okay. So, I mean, it wasn't different. Okay, so it was I like just, just was going, going back home. Not home, but I used to go there on holiday, and so okay. I knew what existed there. But even when you started growing up and started appreciating life, were there things that you saw that you said we could replicate this back home and life would be better for well, the, general, the general A lot of things could be replicated. I mean, how things are done. When you go and you see people buying things, they have to queue for it. They didn't jump the queue. Mm -hmm. These are all things that I saw. These are know. the discipline issues you talk about. Yes. They are all discipline issues. It is. Okay. You know, Ghana, some big man will come. Hey, you know, allow me. And it's not done. They have to join the queue and buy it. Yeah. You know, and that is how a country must be. Okay. Um, you cannot blame government and government can push and enforce the laws, but the individual discipline must be there. Okay. Maybe then, you see, people say the discipline fester because there's, the sanctions are not applied. People know they can get away with anything that they do. I mean, so that is the reason why. We have nice laws on our books, but we cannot enforce them. Sometimes for political expediency, sometimes because we know the law doesn't bite. It will bite with time. With, with time. Okay. Yes. Let's, let's talk about your bid to be flag bearer of the NDC, um, which was not the first time. You uh, made an attempt in... If I'm not mistaken, 2012? 2018. 2018. And then withdrew from the race. But this time you won the full hall against a man who, during his tenure, gave you an appointment. Did you go in hoping to win or you want to, you want to be ahead of the queue just in case his tenure no, is no, done? No, no, no. I wanted to win. But the public spoke. The NDC okay. delegates spoke. They wanted it more than me. Okay. That is the difference. So it's not because you want to be top of the mind awareness at the next Congress. No, that's what you know, that's people say that's what you politicians do. Like, you know, this one will be difficult for me to win. But if I put in a bid, the next time I can go and say, because I lost this one, you have to consider me. Or my I don't name think so. Maybe. I don't think so. Is that what you think? That's fine. 
That's what many people think. Good. Does it mean the next the next um, Congress you're going to um, be in the in the race again? Who knows? All we need is long life, good health. Okay. So I can't sit down and predict now. Okay. Is it is it cost intensive to run very, a campaign? Very expensive. So you've you've really pumped in a lot of money a lot in this campaign. A lot of money. Wow. So you, this is usually travelling or this is um per DMs you give to your team or, or what? Travelling per DMs, fuel, hotels, donation to the constituency and the branch that you visit. Okay. And all and this one you you foot from your personal finances? Personal and friends and you know, support okay. help to do it. You're a very rich man, aren't you? Who? Who want to be poor? Nobody wants to be poor in this world, but I wouldn't say I'm a rich man. Okay. I'm in there. You're a, comf you're a comfortable man. I try. <laughs> I know you're trying to be modest then, and that's Oh, it. not modest. I mean, if I'm rich, I'll say it. Okay. Why not? If I'm rich, I'll say it. I'm not a rich man, but I'm okay. Okay. All right. Let's, let's talk about the, the elections that are coming up. Do you think the NDC stands a very good chance of winning? 100%. We're all going to fight behind Mahama. We are going to do it. You don't believe it. You watch it. Watch me in Ashanti region. Mm. We are going to support the winner of our, our what you call, primaries. That is His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. I'm going to fight in my area. Which area is that? Ashanti. Okay. For us to get the votes for us to win power. They say even in Ashanti, you guys are not united. As I say, is a typical example. Muntaka said the party wanted to oust him you, and all of that. You let them say whatever we want. When the time gets there, you will see. You're confident that you can win? Well, we, we will win. Do we people... mess up in this system. Mm -hmm. And this is poised to win. Do people look at you as somebody who is Ashanti born and bred, um, royal, and say, why are you with the NDC? I mean, typically people say... I've had that experience many times. Years back, I was even told, ah, no, this year, pa, and na, we do a But that is where I belong. That is where I love. I don't do things because a friend or a brother. Most of my family are all NPP, but I choose to be NDC, and I love it there. What's, what's it about the NDC that you love? Everything. I mean, no discrimination. We are all one. We love our people. If you are doing well and they think you can help do something, they push you. Mm. So that what makes me love NDC. And you think that's different with the other party? I, I'm not there, but I don't want to be there. You don't want to be there? Okay. Did you make any compromises, um, like cut a deal before the Congress? Did you cut a deal? Cut a deal with who? I mean, those who are ahead of the queue. Those who are... Um, have How many people are ahead of the queue? No, I'm asking a question. So you have a relationship with Mahama, don't you? Yes, I do. He's my former boss. So when, when he knows that you're contesting him, he's not disappointed? Why should, should he be? He wouldn't. I know him so well, he wouldn't. I mean, many thought you should give him a free ride. It saves everybody the cost of no, the Congress. No, democracy and is all that we want in our party. We want our party to be exciting. We want our party to be good. So that a lot of people would come in. The young ones come in and say, oh, that's for NDC there. If you know what you're about and you're good, you can become a leader or you can get a good position. Okay. So I, I don't think it's like that. But anyway, the primaries are over. Yes. Yeah. We're all one. We are united. We're going to fight. We're going to Asin. Asin, yes. Asin North to go and fight to win power. You were in Kumewu? I was. So even after all the tiredness, you, you had to strap up and go there and, and, and try and hope that Why you're not? going to win. You want your party to win? You want to sit down and sleep? No, no sleeping. <laughs> and we need to support our leader so that we can win power. Power is very important. Have you forgotten the saying President Kufour said, it's better to be a messenger or a laborer in your government being in power yes, than yes. to go and become a secretary general in opposition. Yes, yes, that's so true. So it's very important. So why we have to fight to win power, and I'm going to fight for NDC to win power. Okay. Are you going to consider being a running mate to President Mama if he, if he offered? Oh, I mean, 
it's an interesting question. His Excellency John Draman Mahama has the prerogative. And if he believes that Koju Bozu can do it, why not? Because okay. we are united and I'm going to give him my all to support him win. So why, if he chooses me as his vice, bingo. And we're going to work in tandem to make everything work very well. If you're not running mates, which other portfolio would you like where you think you can make change? I wouldn't want to choose any portfolio. But you should have a place that you said, this place, I want to make a change there. No. Um, the party knows me. The party knows all I can do. Wherever they put me and they see that I have the expertise to do it, I would love to do it. Really? Yes. So, KMA, former KMA boss, former NS, uh, National Sports of Council to National Sports Authority, they say you like doing a lot of rebranding. Everywhere, when you went to Gore, you did that. When you went to NS, uh, the Sports Council, you did that. What's, what's the idea behind it? You see, it's, 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 there's no idea behind it, but you see, you have to refresh the memory of people. If you allow people to see the old thing, yeah. it doesn't progress, it doesn't do for them. Some companies in this world, like Tutals and the Elves and the international companies, every four years they do a facelift just to sell yourself for people to see all that you're doing so that it can bring even more customer or make the company So better. that's why you do it? Yes, a I face believe that. A fresh, yeah, freshen up. Freshen up and get people to have new ideas to do things. So it's not just a change of name because the sports no, council don't. becomes a sports authority. Yes, sports council, that was that one became a, an authority. authority. But the rest, Goyle was still Goyle. It's the face, the logo yeah. and, the, and, the, and the branding, that's all. You believe in a lot of branding? It's, it's, it's my expertise. Okay. Okay. That's what I know very well. Okay. Anyway, this is still the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. We are having a very interesting conversation with Mr. Kojo Bonsu, um, former KMA boss. Uh, he's, like I said, many people describe him in different uh, categories or ways because he's, he's a man of many parts. He's a businessman, an astute one at that, a sports administrator, a politician, and a philanthropist as well. Um, we're in the first part of our conversation here, and then we'll continue in part two where we talk about the state of Ghana, the economy of Ghana, uh, businesses, because he's a businessman, the state of businesses in Ghana in this current um, administration. So all this and more on part two of our conversation, our up close and personal conversation with Mr. Kojo Bonsu. This is still the lowdown with me, Daniel Ojo, on Ghana Web TV. <music> And I think Canadian dollars for the first transaction with the Sandy Coffee. Download to Lemonade Finance. Welcome to the Ghana ICT Hub, a partnership between MTN Ghana and the Government of Ghana through the Ministry of Communications and Digitization. MTN pledged to support Ghana's digitization agenda in line with its ambition to lead the delivery of digital solutions for Africa's progress. In fulfillment of this pledge, MTN Ghana has committed $25 million toward the realization of the Ghana ICT Hub project. The objectives of the Ghana ICT Hub project is anchored on the following. 
to create an ICT-enabled environment for human capital and ICT skills development, to develop an ICT ecosystem through remote access delivery to facilitate job creation for national development, to provide a modern, state-of-the-art physical infrastructure to serve as a pillar for the digital Ghana agenda. The physical infrastructure, when completed, will provide 4,000 square meters of space with the following facilities. Laboratories for technology training and research, innovation hub, co-working spaces for tech innovation startups, tier 3 data center, conferencing facilities, offices and meeting rooms, commercial lettable spaces, gaming area, restaurant and celery facilities. The technology laboratories will be fitted with the next generation ICT equipment and applications to provide the youth of Ghana with practical training in industry 4.0 technologies such as artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, cloud computing, 3D printing, robotics, Internet of Things, IoT, advanced manufacturing techniques, cybersecurity, genetic engineering. The project also seeks to establish a complete ecosystem at the hub through remote access delivery to facilitate job creation for national development. The ecosystem shall comprise of MDAs, technology companies, startups, incubators, research agencies, leading universities globally, foundations worldwide, to create a community. 1. The ecosystem community shall bridge the divide between academia and industry and provide solutions to challenges in the key sectors of health, agriculture, and educational sectors of the economy. 2. It shall also run an innovation program providing mentoring and networking for the youth in tech startups. 3. The ecosystem community shall establish an innovation fund to support startups, research agencies, and other entities in the ecosystem. MTN Ghana and the Ministry of Communications and Digitization are championing the Ghana Digital Agenda for Ghana's development. Welcome to the Digital Age. I want you so bad, Alpha Blacker. I want you. I wanna say yes, I can't resist. I want you. Ooh, I want wow. you, Alpha Cracker. I want you so bad, Alpha Cracker. <laughs> Have a goodness rich in milk and butter in Alpha Cracker. Yummy and deliciously crunchy. Alpha Crackers, simply irresistible. This advert is MD approved. Edumedia, Yeduma. I was said, the Amancas are best so much. Ubeso <laughs> This is the hustler story. Go Ghana! Are you struggling to pay your huge rent advance? Do you wish to pay your rent on a monthly basis? Then good news is here! The Government of Ghana has introduced the National Rental Assistance Scheme to help Ghanaians, especially the youth, pay for their rent on a monthly basis. To qualify, an applicant must show proof of the following minimum requirements. Be a Ghanaian. Possess a valid Ghana card. You must be an adult of 18 years and above. Have a verifiable employment or end income. To apply, visit www.nras.gov.gh. The scheme is currently operational in the following regions Greater Accra Region, Ashanti Region, Eastern Region, Western Region, Bono East Region, and the Northern Region. 
For further inquiries, contact 0551-341-515 or 0550-408-879. National Rental Assistance Scheme, making renting accessible for all. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty McBerry Twist Cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged for a sweet treat. Mm. Premium quality cakes, baked with love for all, enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. Oh, McBerry Twist Cupcakes, simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. On the 1st of May, as I tried to stop the bulldozer going, yeah, I was punched and kicked. So this, I was physically abused. Continuously, issues of land grabbing and other bigger issues around who owns what or not when it comes to lands are big issues here in Ghana. We are at the airport residential area. I'm here to speak with the son of the owner of a property that has recently come into the news because some persons have been trying to reclaim this land under the pretext that they are the original owners. My name is Eche Atisu and this is Say Loud on Ghana Web TV. We speak with Richard Ishen. Hi Mr. Sure. Richard. Hi, how are you? Thanks for coming. Thanks as well for having us. Um, I hope you're doing well. We are hanging in there. <laughs> okay. All right, so we want to just delve right into the conversation. We'd like to take a walk okay. onto your property while we do that. So first of all, I want to understand um, who owns this property? This property was acquired by my father who died two years ago, mm -hmm. Isaac Ashun, from a company he worked with called Pioneer Tobacco Company. Okay. This family has, our family has been on this land continuously for about 50 years. 50? Yes. Okay. And, and, that's, and you have lived here all your life, would you say? Uh, no. While I was outside the country, I wasn't here. Uh, but I have lived here by, my, by myself for the last 16 years. 16? Yes, 16 okay. years. All right. But now, my parents that were here before me. Okay. Now I'd like to just understand um, exactly what your father did. You, you tell me your father is late? Yes, 19, uh, October 2020. Okay, Yeah. all right. So what did your, your father do? For a living? Yes. Um, he, at the very end of uh, his career at Pioneer Tobacco, he was a director of the company, an executive director, focusing on public relations and matters like that. Okay, all right. And so, your father acquired this land. You grew up on this property. Is that it? Uh, not accurate. I wasn't here for most of that time. Okay. But the whole rest of the family grew up on this property. Mm. And they have, they have lived here continuously for that period of time. Okay, so this is in a prime area, like we mentioned. This is airport residential area. How big or not is is this land? This plot is about 1.4 acres. Okay, all right. Now let's let's now get into the issues of what's happening now. What happened to your building as we see it? It's completely to the ground now. Yeah. What is the issue surrounding this property and this land in particular? Okay. Uh, I want to start off by saying that there is no confusion at the Lands Commission as to who owns this property. Um, however, uh, somebody went to a court in Tema okay. and met a judge in Tema who gave them the right to possess this property as a default judgment. Mm. We were not informed, and I think that was deliberate 
We were, we were not informed of the case in Tema because that's the plan, that we don't know so they can get the default judgment from that judge and then use it to, as a sledgehammer to abuse the rightful owners of this land. Hmm. Um, I don't know if you are curious about the story they tell in their documents to the, the court in Tema. What, what, what does that say? Okay. They claim that 40 years ago, in 1983, mm -hmm. a man called Maxwell in Tim bought this property from my father. At a meeting with, uh, at the police station, the police headquarters, they were asked, do you know who this Mr. And Tim is? Do you know where he is? Do you know he's alive or dead? They said, no, they have no idea who that is. But do you know any Michael and Tim? No, there is probably no such person. They claim that in 1995, an uncle of theirs, who is sometimes represented as in the U.S. or somewhere, sometimes in Canada, called Coombson, bought this property from Maxwell and Tim. Mr. Coombson never met my father or did anything with my father, but he bought it from somebody who claimed to have bought it from my father 40 years ago. And it is on the basis of that. Oh, of course, they lied in the documents that are saying that they live here and they've lived here all this time. That is not true either. Um, so it is on the basis of that that uh, the, the judge in Tema mm -hmm. uh, decided that they had a right to possess this property. Now, now let's just situate this properly because we are within the Accra area and you're speaking about a court from Tema. Yeah. How is that possible? I am not aware of exactly how it works. I'm not a lawyer, but I would have thought that an Accra court would have some jurisdiction over this property. I don't know how it works. I don't know whether you can get up from airport and go and file a case in Koforidua and claim that, uh, well, I don't know uh, yeah. how that works. Mm. Um, I see. Now, now, so exactly when did these persons get onto your property, this property, and then cause this devastation? Was it just in one day? Okay, uh, the original appearance here with the bailiff from the court in Tema was on March the 23rd, and the 24th of March this year, 19, uh, 2023. Between that day and the end of April, they came here on numerous occasions more than five times to do damage. This is between what period? Uh, after the 24th of March okay. this year and before the 1st of May. The 1st of May is when they brought the bulldozer to bulldoze this whole house while all our properties and records were in the building. Hmm. I don't know what the purpose of that was, but uh, clearly an attempt to uh, cause masculine damage or intimidate us. Richard, I just want to find out how did a bulldozer get onto your property when there was a gate at the entrance? Okay, the first thing that happens every time we get in trouble here is this. We had hired a couple of people to secure this property after being attacked repeatedly. Hmm. On the morning of the 1st of May, a number of police officers from the regional police uh, uh, CTU arrive here. Counterterrorism uh, unit? That's CTU? I don't know what okay. CTU means. Their, their claim was this, that they had been told that this place had numerous 30 or so land guards uh, causing trouble here and they were here to arrest them. They walked through the property and didn't see a single person except two of my carpenters helping me put up doors that they had broken. As the police officers left, they opened the door and these people rushed in. Uh, the group that came on the 1st of Mar uh, May was involved about 30 land guards on motorcycles 
including other people in cars. There were numerous, over 50 people on this property doing this damage. And it was only after about an hour or so of the damage that the, uh, uh, the bulldozer arrived to do the last few things. Hmm. What you have to understand about these people is that they are thieves. They steal things. In the, in the time since the 2nd of March, they have stolen money thousands of dollars. They've stolen laptops. They've stolen everything of value in this house was stolen by these criminals. So uh, it is not simply somebody trying to acquire, well, they don't own this land. <laughs> um, there is, appears to be this cabal of land snatchers that can get judgments on your blind side and use that as a sledgehammer to try and force you to give them the property. We don't intend to go anywhere. Uh, Lands rec Lands Commission records will show that we have a lease on this property and they have recently extended that lease for another 50 years. So the initial, the initial lease was supposed to end when? Uh, the one that my fa last one my father got ends on in 2028 okay. but we you can go to the lands commission and give the balance time. back and okay. get a fresh lease which is what we've that. done and we've gotten a written documentation from the lands commission that they have accepted our request to do that and agreed to give us the extension hmm. so, but before that we still had a lease that expired in 2028 that is five years from now one of the things that is interesting to note is the impunity with which these guys operate. Okay. On the day they were here using a uh, bulldozer to break this, there were police officers here. Uniformed men? Yes. We had gone to the airport police to report what was going on here. They sent with us four uh, armed, uh, a patrol team with four officers armed. Those officers were here as I begged them to stop these guys from bringing the bulldozer in and doing this damage. They were on their phones talking to somebody who probably told them, no, leave them alone, let them do what they want to do. In any case, having four armed airport uh, police officers did nothing. Probably even encouraged these people because they could see that the police were on the side or whatever that means. In any case, there have been numerous cases where we've arrested we've, uh, people, some of them have been arrested here, taken to the airport police station and just released. Is this before all of this chaos started this year? All of this is after their, they came here on the 24th of March saying the property was now theirs. So it's been a continuous thing for the last month or six weeks or so, yes, we have been under tremendous abuse and the police have done nothing, nothing. We go there, we've paid what we needed to pay and that didn't help anything. Hmm. Uh, as we stand here, if something happens here, we can't call the police because we, we, they're not going to do anything. They either don't care or whatever else it is, but they have never done anything to help protect us in this property. You mentioned that you've, you've undergone abuse. Have you personally been... I have, on the 1st of May, as I tried to stop the bulldozer going here, I was punched and kicked. So this, I was physically abused. Who actually did that? Well. There were about uh, a total of about 30 land guards plus other people here. But what is in, in, really important is that there were police officers standing a few feet from me mm -hmm. as I was kicked and punched. And I told them, you see what's going on? They did nothing about that. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how even assault. <laughs> over, I, I'm 68 years old. I'm not a young man. But being assaulted on, in my own house and the police stood there and did nothing. Mm -hmm. So there has been a lot of violence in this place. And everything you have to do, you have to do without the police because they're useless.
Mm. We'll, we'll get back to yeah. <laughs> this conversation. I think that we're getting deeper into it. But let's just take a quick break. When we return, we'll get back to the conversation with Richard here at the airport residential area. <laughs> We're still here with a 68 year old Richard Ishen. Um, he's the son of a property owner here at the airport residential area. Richard, before we went on that break, you spoke about the things you had done. Interestingly, you had even gone ahead to make certain efforts to get the police on your side. Can you give us more details into that? Okay. On one particular, very often when the police came here, the guys had done, the people had done damage and left. Mm -hmm. On one particular instance, they were able to arrest about, a total of about eight people on the property during this damage. We were all taken to the airport police station where I uh, gave my uh, statement. So I was the complainant. Okay. They were interviewed and statements were taken from them. The police did nothing with that information. More interesting is, is that even as a complainant, we were asked to pay money, a lot of money. When you say a lot, can we, can we put a number to it? 30,000 Ghana CDs. So you paid this to who? By that you mean, did, whose hand did I put it in? Well, did you give this to the police? Yes, to the police. Was there any official documentation to show that you were paying this amount for such and such? <laughs> uh, no. But, but it was, what, what was the money for? The understanding me and my lawyer had was this, that to prosecute the case or to do whatever had to be done, we needed to make that contribution. However, Having made that contribution, we left the police station only to find out that the people were released that same night. Mm -hmm. Maybe they made a bigger contribution. I don't know. Well, you call this contribution more or less a mild way of calling this. Was this some form of a bribe? A compens was that a contribution? How, um, how is that contribution to what cause? Uh, was it a bribe that it was I try? L l let me talk about bribe. When I say I pay the bribe, I'm trying to get somebody to do something that they're not supposed to do. Mm. We were asked to pay the money. I think we were extorted. I think it was extortion. Okay. Because if we didn't pay, clearly the criminals were going to walk. But we paid it and the criminals walked. That means even the money was paid, yes. yet nothing was done. That is correct. Uh, we can only speculate to see if, as, uh, ask whether they paid more or whether, or whether there were powerful people involved in that. Mm. But we've heard stories that there are powerful people, some in Flagstaff House, who are interested in this plot. This is a juicy plot. It's in a very good part of town. It's a corner lot. Right next door is Enterprise Insurance. Uh, I wasn't here, but I was told that they had inquired in the past about uh, acquiring this property or expanding into this property. You're referring to Enterprise? Enterprise Insurance. That's okay. the uh, guest house right next okay. there. Right. Um, we've heard names of other senior people in Flagstaff House who we, they say are... are the, the guy, the face of this side is a... <clears throat> the face of this fight is a guy called Anani Daniels, who is an illiterate. Uh, the people behind him are very, very powerful because they can make phone calls and stop the police from doing anything. Who, who is this Anani guy you mentioned? He's a guy who claims to be having a power of attorney for his uncle, who nobody asks about, who was in Canada before and is in the U.S. and is in Canada, the guy who supposedly bought this property from another man in 1995. So Anani Daniels is his local, has a local power of attorney, and it is with that that he's working. Have you, have he you works met with a very uh, guy who I... I've heard maybe a police officer whose name is Kweku Adi. And these guys are the team with their powerful friends that we've had to confront all this time. Mm. This sounds like 
a cabal or a group of persons who you you create an impression are trying to take over this property is that what it seems like and i want to understand why you are so convinced that some of the people who are behind this might be high up in political circles um i believe that there is a cabal of land snatchers in accra now i believe that everybody knows <laughs> that this property does not belong to anani daniels <laughs> Ananiel Daniels himself, there's no claim that he bought this himself. He says his uncle in the U.S. In all our meetings with police, I don't, I have never heard anybody asking, what is your uncle's phone number or who is this guy who you say owns it, who sends you on this mission to destroy? Yeah. Uh, several people have indicated to us that they know people in the highest places in government who have an interest in this property. In fact, after this property was destroyed, some people arrived here for a visit, a walkthrough. And though you can't be sure what they say, they indicated that they were from Flagstaff House. That's what they told me. Okay. They may have been lying, but that is what they told me. I, I think that they're, they're representatives of the real people behind this fight that we have on our hands. Hmm. Now the case is in court, is that right? Um, in many ways, right. The judge in Tema affirmed his decision to give this piece of land to Anani Daniels and his friends. We have served notice, and that was last Friday, which was the 5th, 6th, 7th, the 5th of May. Okay. On that same day, we filed notice of an appeal and we also filed uh, for a stay of execution uh, until the appeal is heard. Mm. Um, but we're expecting them any day now. They come here whenever they feel like, and there's no policeman to call uh, uh, when there is. The funny thing you, uh, I think I want to put on record is this. In many, many cases, the police have come ahead of Anani Daniels to clear the way for him. I have a licensed shotgun, and I informed the police of that. They came here and took my weapon from me. That same night was the most brutal attack from these guys where they pulled the roof off, etc. If I had my weapon, I don't think they would have come in here. Well, not with that kind of attitude that they came in here. So, but the police to today still have my weapon. That weapon is a fully registered weapon from Nima Police Station. And if they want to know if it's legal, they can just call their friends at Nima Police Station. But they are keeping my weapon as of today for over a month. And I believe that is part of the way they try to make it easy for these cabal and these criminals to do what they have to do. You mentioned earlier that you, you now live here for our 16 years yes that's correct now that the place has been brought down it's completely destroyed that is correct. i see workers around how are you still living on this property i am here most of the day uh but i don't sleep here okay so so what's the way forward now workers are around i see they're trying to is it salvage are you trying to rebuild what exactly are you trying At to this do this stage is more of a salvage effort uh, we need to remove the roofing so that the bulldozer can remove the things and put it there uh, on the other side. So at this stage, it's more of a solving. The reason we have to do it is that they broke the house with all our property in it. So looking for even our IDs and wallets and stuff has been a week-long project. Hmm. Every day we find something that is important that we, we needed. Uh, they intended to do as much damage as possible. All right. Now, there's no trust in the police. You have suspicions of people high up in political circles. What is the next step? What are you trying to do? I mean, what are you doing actually to ensure that this property continues to stay in your name? Just like you've mentioned, the Lands Commission has records that this land is even in your family's name for another 50 years after 2028 20, what's, what's the way forward um 
We have naively attempted to think that the courts will sort this out. And we are still in the court and taking every step. But everybody I meet tells me that everybody you're talking to knows the land doesn't belong to these people and that maybe you should see if you can get some powerful friends of your own. Hmm. Um, so we are, we, well, this sort of thing helps because it tells people the story. Uh, and if there are any powerful men out there <laughs> who want uh, to do something noble, <laughs> they can come in here and help us with this fight. Because this is not, uh, it is sad to think that in Ghana, in this day and age, it doesn't matter whether you're right or wrong. <laughs> People will use brute force mm. and the police cannot help you in that struggle. All right, now your father is late. Yeah. Do you mind me asking where your mother is? My mother passed about, whoa. Okay, before your dad? Yes, about uh, eight years before my dad. Yeah. Oh, okay. And she died in this house, yes. All right. So, and, and, and you have siblings? I have uh, two sisters and one brother. Okay, all right. So now that it, it appears, are you, are you returning to court any time soon? Um, sometime this month, we are returning to court, but we also intending to take a little of a, on the offensive. For all this property damage, Anani Daniels and Kweku Adi, etc., need to be held accountable. So I'm meeting with my lawyers to see if we can file like a 10 million CD lawsuit almost immediately, challenging their right. First of all, we are claiming that these are fraudsters. And everything they claim is based on that fraud. And I think that some court should have a chance to decide whether they should pay for the damage that they've done here and all the things that they've stolen here. Mm. Mr. Shen, thank you very much for speaking with us. It was a short notice, but you've been able to speak to us about the issue here. So that's been the issue here at this property here at the airport residential area. We've just spoken with Mr. Richard Shen who is a son of the actual owner of this property. Isaac Eshen. Isaac Eshen of, of blessed memory. Well, that's been it for Say It Loud here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Eche Atiswanta. Another time, be safe. money back home from UK, Canada, and now US. I have something. I get instant charges. I think wait in this year. I unbeatable. We should make promo code Dr. Like Nigga 10 pounds, 10 dollars, and 10 Canadian dollars. The first transaction with this send this Gaka coffee. Download to Lemonade Finance. Welcome to the Ghana ICT Hub, a partnership between MTN Ghana and the Government of Ghana through the Ministry of Communications and Digitization. MTN pledged to support Ghana's digitization agenda in line with its ambition to lead the delivery of digital solutions for Africa's progress. In fulfillment of this pledge, MTN Ghana has committed $25 million toward the realization of the Ghana ICT Hub project. The objectives of the Ghana ICT Hub project is anchored on the following.
to create an ICT-enabled environment for human capital and ICT skills development, to develop an ICT ecosystem through remote access delivery to facilitate job creation for national development, to provide a modern, state-of-the-art physical infrastructure to serve as a pillar for the digital Ghana agenda. The physical infrastructure, when completed, will provide 4,000 square meters of space with the following facilities. Laboratories for technology training and research, innovation hub, co-working spaces for tech innovation startups, tier 3 data center, conferencing facilities, offices and meeting rooms, commercial lettable spaces, gaming area, restaurant and celery facilities. The technology laboratories will be fitted with the next generation ICT equipment and applications to provide the youth of Ghana with practical training in industry 4.0 technologies such as artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, cloud computing, 3D printing, robotics, Internet of Things, IoT, advanced manufacturing techniques, cybersecurity, genetic engineering. The project also seeks to establish a complete ecosystem at the hub through remote access delivery to facilitate job creation for national development. The ecosystem shall comprise of MDAs, technology companies, startups, incubators, research agencies, leading universities globally, foundations worldwide, to create a community. 1. The ecosystem community shall bridge the divide between academia and industry and provide solutions to challenges in the key sectors of health, agriculture, and educational sectors of the economy. 2. It shall also run an innovation program providing mentoring and networking for the youth in tech startups. 3. The ecosystem community shall establish an innovation fund to support startups, research agencies, and other entities in the ecosystem. MTN Ghana and the Ministry of Communications and Digitization are championing the Ghana Digital Agenda for Ghana's development. Welcome to the Digital Age. I want you so bad, Alpha Cracker. I want you. I wanna say yes, I can't resist. I want you. Ooh, I want wow. you, Alpha Cracker. I want you so bad, Alpha Cracker. <laughs> Have a goodness rich in milk and butter in Alpha Cracker. Yummy and deliciously crunchy. But I can't resist you. Alpha Crackers, simply irresistible. This advert is MD approved. A dreamed via a juma. It was said the Amanka Saube so moi. Ubeso <laughs> <laughs> Obi amini wa wun kola mi sey mi hwade mpo na che me kawa pon fun mu se me sumi wo ipe mu e wanye mi hwade wanche wanye me hwe onye oba fufura na na ni bre afa onye oba bi ni wa support to send wa bo ni tena wa page na consume kwa na me kan se ni come bebu o this is the hustler story Go Ghana! Are you struggling to pay your huge rent advance? Do you wish to pay your rent on a monthly basis? Then good news is here! The Government of Ghana has introduced the National Rental Assistance Scheme to help Ghanaians, especially the youth, pay for their rent on a monthly basis. To qualify, an applicant must show proof of the following minimum requirements. Be a Ghanaian, possess a valid Ghana card, you must be an adult of 18 years and above have a verifiable employment or earned income. To apply, visit www. 
nras.gov.gh. The scheme is currently operational in the following regions. Greater Accra Region, Ashanti Region, Eastern Region, Western Region, Bono East Region and the Northern Region. For further inquiries, contact 0551-341-515 or 0550-408-879. National Rental Assistance Scheme, making renting accessible for all. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty but very twist cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged for a sweet treat. Mm. Premium quality cakes baked with love for all, enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. Oh, McBerry Twist Cupcakes, simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. Prior to even our wedding, we discussed how long it will take for us to introduce a, a third person into the family. I like that. Oh. Mm, right there. a lot of marriages collapse because of childlessness. Husbands, wives, mocked for what they term as their inability to have children. So I asked the question, are children the ultimate prize in marriages? So here on Moons and Cuddles, we discuss how to handle childlessness. And also, in the cases where you find yourself in what they term as an unplanned pregnancy, how best do you handle the situation? And I have here with me the right guest to do the discussion. So Thomas, Duke Labeg Amankwado, he is a doctoral research fellow at the University of Oslo, Norway. Yes, and he is also a former University of Oxford scholar, Oxford scholar, and he is the author of historic fiction book, The Half Moon. And also, he is a coach. Thomas, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Paula. It's a pleasure to have you here. I'm honored to be here. Yeah, he's very popular on Facebook, so you should check out all the amazing things that he does. We're not doing this alone. We also have Smart Techie Nixon. He is an author, a broadcast journalist, a public relations officer. So when we talk, you know, event hosting, when you're looking for someone to train you in public speaking, when we talk about, uh, you know, creative writing and anything that has got to do uh, with stage play production, we say smart to achieve next. Mm. Gentlemen, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Thank yeah. You. Later on, we're going to discuss all the amazing things that you do. That's why we call you this, the proud sons of the land, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but today is, is, is a big deal yeah. In, yeah. in our parts of the world where we find ourselves and they say children are a gift from God. And when you don't have children in their marriage, trust me, you, they're going to come after you. So yeah. I just want to find out, uh, are children the ultimate prize in marriage? Let me take it from you, uh, Smart, since you are the married man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice way to cut uh, Duke some slack on this one. <laughs> but um, interestingly, I think that one of the fascinating things that I've heard about marriage is um, a married without a child is still a marriage. And so if you are a couple and you're going into marriage, it is one of the things that you should have at the back of your mind, that a marriage without a child is still a marriage. It doesn't nullify the status of the marriage, okay? And that is one of the things that people do not come to accept. Because if you take a look at our part of the world, and I'm quite glad that you mentioned our part of the world. When you marry an individual, you are marrying a family. Mm -hmm. You are not marrying just a person. So at the weddings, you see it manifest. You see expectations of people being projected on you. And after the marriage as well, you would hear these expectations because sometimes you would go and visit your in-laws 
and some of them will pass very funny comments like hey it's been a year since you guys got married what's happening we all know the intent of that particular statement it is an indirect way to tell you that you guys are really de delaying when it comes to childbirth mm -hmm. and you hear these comments coming from the mothers especially i want to hold my grandchild i want to hold my grandchild but on a broader spectrum if you really want to take a look at childbirth and the importance of it in marriage there are a lot of things that stops or prevents a couple from having a child mm -hmm. they let's even move away from the medical condition i personally believe that there is nothing like there is this funny saying we have in ghana People tell you, oh, you just give birth, God will but take But I don't know how much baby food, pampers, diapers, <laughs> all those things. Precisely. We have no mm, idea. Precisely. But, Smart, I'll come to you. Thomas, uh, we know that family pressure can be very worse. Yeah. So how best can a couple handle an in-law who is always on your door knocking? When are the children going to come? When are the children going to come? And usually, it's the women who suffer this. So as a loving husband, how best can you team them? Well... Thank you very much for the question, and um, I'm not a loving husband yet, so <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit tricky. Um, but that being said, I think that children are indeed a blessing to, to um, every uh, couple. And w when we look at this from, from a cultural perspective, from a cultural di di dimension, we understand that it's not just about having a child for, for, for that, for just having a child for that sake, but it, it is a way of sort of bringing the two families together in ways that probably would, would be impossible by just uh, signing a document in court or exchanging um, vows. Um, this, this sort of, it's, 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 it carves this union uh, between the two families in a very spectacular way, and that is why families always, you know, place a lot of um, words on 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 on, on children. Um, but it, but then again, you you're not uh, you're not your own creator, and you, you sometimes it might it might. I mean, you try and you're not you're not getting it. Um, but how to handle this is is a very tricky question that I don't think we can unravel. Mm. Um, 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 uh, get to an answer. Uh, but what I can say is that it all comes down to understanding between the families. Um, what, why are we not having a child? Um, is there a medical explanation to this? Is there something we can do medically to improve our chances of getting a baby? If not, then what's the next best option to having um, a baby? Um, I think that it comes down to just, just communication between the families and, and getting to find the best uh, alternative. Um, okay. yeah. You know, people place a lot of emphasis when it comes to, um, you mentioned the medical aspect of it, mm -hmm. then you realize that other people are also putting a lot of pressure on the spiritual aspect of it. Yes. So, you know, a couple finds themselves in a quagma yeah. where someone says, okay, forget about the doctors, let's go and see this pastor. Yeah. I Before think that you realize you, you've been all over yes, the place. Yeah. But then I just want to find out, because I'm a woman, let me speak for the women. Okay. In a marriage where there is no kids, childlessness, the first person that people blame, the woman, yeah. oh, you can't have children, you're a barren woman, the list goes on and on. Why are people quick to you know put the blame on women meanwhile there are men who got low sperm count mm -hmm. you put 20 if that's the way yeah. it's not too hard but then people are quick to do is it that the women love to take the blame because they don't vote the people know oh my husband you know his performance is just ah, why women why? are the bearers of life okay women are the bearers of life every life on this planet it came from a woman every single life there is Nothing that walks on the surface of this earth that didn't come from a woman. I mean, aside mm -hmm. the man's contribution, mm -hmm. it is the women that we see produce. It is the women we see deliver. Yeah. It is the woman we are expecting to bring the child into the family. 
But what they forget is what you also pointed out, is that it's two people that put the woman in that particular condition mm -hmm. before she can deliver. Mm -hmm. However, our, our families are designed in such a way that whenever people get married at the end of the day, people have this mindset that, okay, the moment I am expecting something from your family mm -hmm. or from the couple mm -hmm. and I'm not getting it, mm -hmm. the first intent is to change the woman mm -hmm. and not to change the man. Mm -hmm. The pressure is that, oh, she's not fertile enough. Mm -hmm. We should have done a background check on Checking her family. Mm -hmm. We should have asked more questions. Do you know whether she has done any abortions? And so there is too much of expectations, especially on the side of the woman. Mm -hmm. And I've always maintained this position that it takes a man of strong mind mm -hmm. to stand and tell his own parents in the face that stop the noise. Stop putting the woman through that pressure. Because there are things in life you just cannot control. And it's also one of the hardest truths that people can accept. There are things you can control. There are couples today, there is nothing medically wrong with them. Exactly. There is nothing spiritually wrong with them. It is not coming. So I would borrow the words of Duke. It comes down to understanding. Do you even understand these people are in a space where they are doing everything for the first time? The marriage is their first marriage. Yeah. They are even finding ways of navigating it. And you are here putting pressure of childbirth on them. And so you must have a man. If the man weakens in his mind to kowtow to, let's say, whatever family, family is saying, is saying, that is where the woman feels a lot of pressure on herself because she feels like she doesn't have anybody to lean on. Exactly. But if you are the man and you step forward Stand up for her. and you are able to tell even your own parents, not just the lady's parents, your own parents that hey mm. because I we mean, say you are the you know you are the head of the house Act and you are such. the neck exactly <laughs> the woman is the neck so you tell them this is my home this is how things are going to be run mm. but then duke in our parts of the world we because we prioritize children a lot yeah in the cases when they are not coming people want to try everything possible they want to know that they've exhausted all means possible but one thing that people don't have to go for is surrogacy or adoption yeah why is it a big this, this, this is a very tricky question, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it comes down to Ghana's social structure, our, our cultural social structure. Mm -hmm. We, you know, the, the, the smallest unit in a Ghanaian society um, is the family, right? Yeah. And um, until recently, it was the extended family. And this is a very close-knit blood relation, mm -hmm. right? And Ghanaians, it's hard to sometimes to admit this, but we are very tribalistic. Highly. We're very, <laughs> you know, ethnocentric yeah. to, to, that, to that extent. And so, you know, you, you want, people just can't understand why they should just go and take someone. Mm -hmm. They don't share this you know, blood relation with, and then all of a sudden treat that person as if that yeah, person family. was, was his family. Yeah. And this, this, is, this, is, this is the reason why adoption is very, very, very um, no. um, um, difficult. But, but then again, this is a country where or this, we, we are also quite funny because we also love to bring people that were not uh, blood related to into our homes and, and then host, also hostable, and also hostable. and also yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and also treat treat yeah. them as if they were family we have so many people living with their aunties and uncles and great great uncles and great great aunties and distance relate relatives and all that but i think when it comes down to childlessness and adoption it also sort of sends a signal that you have conceded defeat mm -hmm. mm. as soon as you mm you go in for an adoption, Please. then you send a signal to the church members and they make you know that, <laughs> that you don't trust, uh, you don't trust, you don't, God. You don't trust God anymore. Mm, that's and you're, very true. you're taking the matters into your, your own hands. Mm -hmm. So in a case where we're getting married, maybe I'm a career woman, this is the time where I'm at my peak, so I just want to give myself some time. And then the family people come in and all that. 
people will even think like, okay, of course you don't, ha you, you can't have children. But meanwhile, at that time, I'm just taking my yeah. time. You married mm -hmm. smart. So, how best can a couple inform the family that okay, we are giving ourselves some time? Mm -hmm. So, for us, I think my wife and I, we 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 made a lot of things clear to both parents. We have visited my parents and they've passed the comment and shut them up. We have visited her parents. They've made a comment and she shut them up. Because prior to even our wedding, we discussed how long it would take for us to introduce a, a third person into the family. I like that. You, you understand? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That discussion went so deep to the point that we had to even discuss the type of education we want to give our kids. And so we, we thought to ourselves that it needed planning. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something that we were just going to step in it, you know, do. And most things that people do not weigh as well. It's, it's quite interesting you mentioned a career. Because in Ghana today, if a lady should get pregnant, it means that she is about to lose about two years of her life. And if most men are fully aware in terms of consciousness mm -hmm. of the place in which you're going to put the woman, they will think twice about how they bring kids into, you know, because there are, I, I know a friend who, the wife gave birth, the first one, mm. and the second one followed very quickly, like six months later. Okay. The, the wife was, has, had taken seed again. And so now, this lady, who probably may be supporting you at home with other stuff, in terms of payment of bills and all that, is going to be out of work for the next three to four years. Mm -hmm. And if we do not manage these things, and I, I really agree with you, because now you must ask yourself, why are we bringing the kids? Is it just we enjoy having kids? Or we really want to give them the best of life? Or it is just nice to have an addition in the family to the, you know, to the extended family? But before we wrap up on this particular discussion, I just want to ask you how important, just hammer, how important yeah. it is to plan your children. Because in Ghana, we're talking about economy, things are hard, but you know, people just want to give birth. And there are a lot of children on the streets yeah. who are just under the sun, selling and all that. You if you know you are not ready, go and take care of Paula, let's, let's face the fact. It's very difficult to plan in Ghana. Mm. It's... <laughs> It's not like people don't want to plan or people just don't, are just careless. It's just difficult to plan anything in Ghana. Mm -hmm. People plan the education and the university lecturers go on strike and all of a sudden your plan is thrown mm -hmm. a job. It's very difficult. We live in a country where almost everything is based on contingency. You can't even plan a trip that would take one hour. You end up spending three hours. Contingency must. So, so the <laughs> yes, you say I, I can't can stay my plan. <laughs> wow. So this is this, so. That's the fact of 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 this of this life mm -hmm. in, in this country. You can't just plan. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you should not plan. plan. But you have to plan in such a way that would inculcate into your plan these inconsistencies. Okay. These these you know, unforeseen circumstances. No one, every, almost every friend I have here in Ghana is in a precarious job situation, apart from those who are working for the government. Mm -hmm. I have uh, one of my friends who recently had, um, um, in the span of uh, four years, has had three kids, and this guy is unemployed. And I asked him just yesterday, I asked him, but how are you being responsible? You are not even <laughs> responsible for your own self. You're not being, how are you doing this? Three kids in four years. And then, he, and then what he told me was that, <clears throat> how, how do I think he survived? And I said, how? He said, eh, God. It's just God. God will take care of us. It's just, it's just God. I see. It is important to plan, Paula. But at the same time, we don't want to discourage the youth we don't want to discourage our peers exactly. from taking certain bold steps. Great, great. Thank you very much, gentlemen. So we're having today's discussion at Anpi's Barber Studio here at the Legon City Mall. Mm -hmm. Guys, ladies, just working anytime from uh, Monday to Sunday. He works 
all the time. So you can come here for a clean shave by a gentleman. It's very important that you look good all the time. We meant to have braiding here. We do twists and locks. We do pedicure. It's a 360 thing here. And the environment is very cool. When you come here, you can come with your friends. And as I stated the last time, you can come with your you know, boyfriend. Let him get a clean cut. And then later on, you see what will happen. But we'll take a quick break here. When we come back, Moons and Cardos on Ghana Web TV continues. TV. I am Paula Amabroni. Now for the second part, we're doing something interesting. How to take responsibility for an unplanned pregnancy. Now this is just not for married people. Before the marriage, when you're there with your girlfriend, with your uh, a woman that you're seeing, and maybe if it's just a one night thing and she comes back to say, I'm pregnant, hmm. how do you handle it? Do you say, oh please, this is not what I bargain for. Go do the abortion or you take responsibility because at the end of the day, men are taking responsibility for pregnancies. Well, the plan was never to get married. So I just want to have a discussion with our men, Thomas and Smart. Smart, so uh, if you had one married your wife, right? And the lady comes in and says, um, I'm pregnant for you. The plan was not to, you know, get married. How are you going to take it? How are you going to handle it? I would have advised against it. I would have advised against it. I have a very strong uh, mindset when it comes to stuff like that. And I've realized that in our country, people frown on certain decisions. Now, there is an argument whether it's pro-life, it's pro-choice, mm -hmm. which, which side do you stand? I don't, I don't stand anywhere. I stand where I would benefit from the results. Okay, because a lot of things truncate. A lot of things truncate the moment you take that decision. And this is something I, t I tell people, you are free to choose. Uh, you are never free from the consequences of your choice. Because the moment something just happens, everything about your life changes. A lady comes to you, she tells you, probably someone you've been dating for a year or two, she tells you, I'm pregnant. What's going to happen now? That means you are going to assume a particular role. Daddy. A, a daddy role. <laughs> and a yes, daddy, daddy role daddy. comes with a lot of, you know, responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And probably, like Luke was saying, you are not even fully in that space or you don't even have the potential have to take care of yourself. Too well. so, so, you cannot tell us that you are not ready. Exactly. So that is where the choice comes mm -hmm. in, like I mentioned. If, what do you want? What do you have with your partners? Or you mentioned even um, one night stand and stuff yeah. like that. People do it once and... I'm pregnant. The funny part is the, the bad boys do it consistently and one good boy Only tries it once. One time. One time. No, time. Then everything is <laughs> That's okay. so painful. So in as much as it is very difficult for you to decide, mm -hmm. the two of you must sit down. The two of you must sit down and ask yourself, do we do we need this? Okay. Can we handle this? Because what we normally say is, oh, you will in ma nkola. Maybe if we take this away, we might not get one anymore. Do you know how many women are stuck in the hospital because they are men or boyfriends or husbands cannot pay for them to be discharged? It's just there, numerous of them. So you ask yourself, you can't even pay for your partner to be discharged. What will you feed the children with? This is what a will big you? Question. So planning is mm -hmm. key. All right. And communication. It's also key All because right. you Smart, must I, I, I want to do a quick one on Okay. Thomas, as a woman, I want to understand why do some men, emphasis on some men, switch up? We're having a loving relationship. The yeah. moment the lady says, I'm pregnant, yeah. then you switch up. Then you are showing us your true colors. Why do you do that? It's because, you know, if you, <laughs> let's face the fact, some people have sex for recreational purposes <laughs> and not for, um, <laughs> okay. Family making purpose. Yeah. It was nothing serious. So assuming you go into as some sort of a social contract, right? That you're having sex and you're you very much aware this that I say you say a friendly match. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. It's for recreational purpose. Then then the lady turns up and says, Well, 
there is a lifelong commitment that has been, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, as a result of a, of course, you would flip. I will flip. I would. If I'm being honest, because that wasn't the point. That wasn't yeah. the social contract. That wasn't the, unless, of course, there was some sort of uh, consensus that mm -hmm. um, if this, you know, results in, in pregnancy, we, we could consider it, right? Mm -hmm. But if there, there isn't anything of that sort, then but I think see, that... Thomas, a man can talk about, oh, we're going to have a happy kids and stuff like that. So some, some men actually talk about having kids until you tell them there's a kid on the way. But then you talk about uh, a, a man having to flee because that was not part of his plan. Would you say that is the woman's responsibility to be on a long-term contraceptive while you are not so certain if the man is going to, uh, you know, assert responsibility in that case, Paula, do I, we take the decision of, you know, being in control? Because when it when it turns out, it always yes. comes back to us. Yes. As a as a man sitting where I'm sitting now, first of all, I can't dictate or even suggest what kind of contraceptive you should put into your body because these things come with their own yeah. side effects, yes. right? Yeah. But what I can advise my friends is that. You should understand that once you get pregnant, even if the man is going to be responsible, you are going to be the one carrying the baby for mm -hmm. nine months. You are going to be the one whose career might be affected by this baby, mm -hmm. right? So even though it appears to be a 50-50% responsibility going into this, it isn't. Yes. And that's, that's a natural fact of the matter, that women must always be a step ahead of us when it comes to being smart about whether you want to have a baby or not because once you get pregnant whether it was for recreational purpose or whatever <laughs> as soon as the lady becomes pregnant in my in my humble opinion mm -hmm. the choice of whether to keep the baby or not is almost solely the woman's responsibility if the woman says no i can't because of my career or even because of my body that's a choice. That's a body. That's a choice. Exactly. Likewise, if she says, well, I think I'm 29 and my mom is, and so I want to have it, then you, the guy, you are in big trouble. You can't force the, the, the woman to get an abortion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Sure. So if, if this is, based on what I've, I've painted here right now, women should always understand that even though it's a 50-50 sort of affair okay. it's your responsibility to protect yourself and protect your career and protect your health sure. and don't get pregnant for no. men who can't afford to bear you out of yeah, man, let me put yeah. it that way yeah, no. but yeah but then before we wrap up on this conversation i just want to find out some men say they were trapped into marriage with a pregnancy yeah. so if a man who is in the hot seat you find yourself in this situation by you thinking oh you don't want to have a baby mama you don't want your kids to be scattered should you go ahead, even without any plan, or the woman being the woman of your dream, should you go ahead and marry that person? And I would say that don't go having sex with women that you don't, you can't close your eyes and imagine that this woman is going to be. It doesn't married. happen like that, Paula. It doesn't it, happen. It should happen like that. It doesn't happen like that. You should like take that. responsibility for your action. If you're the, having sex this with is, a this woman, this is why I think you should, you, 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 should, you should envisage yourself that in the case this is of the why worst you've case, the am I going to be okay? You know, it's, it doesn't happen like a structured sex. Sex is not always structured and planned. See, those who go for the recreational sex, they know they are game. They're always on the computer. And system. sometimes... But these women who are trapped... Sometimes they, they are the ones that come back with the issues. Love. No, see, dude. They, they are the ones that come smart. back with the issues. We're discussing this because we want people to understand mm -hmm. something. You can find somebody and have a very good vibe with a person on the first day you meet the person. A very good vibe you, you can swear you've never had that vibe with anybody before. And that vibe will lead to sex. And three weeks later, the lady will give you a call and tell you something you, you are not ready to. It. So yes, the conversation circles around that. But then it's it's very long. There is a long decision as to that. Personally, this is something I tell myself. I'll tell you a story. I made a promise to myself that I wouldn't want a lady to have a child for me that I am in no way in the life of the child. Mm -hmm. Let's say if the relationship yeah. doesn't go well. So that is where your point comes in. If I'm about to do something with someone, think about it. I must sit and ask myself,
can this woman be my wife? Mm -hmm. Can I show her off to my parents and my friends? Will I be proud to hold her and not if suck not, her around 4 a.m. and get home. her? Smart, you know? smart. You haven't had some vodka. <laughs> <laughs> some yes, that's what I'm saying. Most of them are not planned. So you, you are in the club, you're having a good Thomas, time. Thomas, tell me about you're why, why you've had the vodka. You're, you're, you're not I mean, thinking straight, yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's not that simple. I mean, Smart was, was trying to um, mm -hmm. I mean, elucidate that point that you, you could be having a good time, you That's know, right. and um, one thing leads to another. Mm -hmm. And before, before you realize you, you are being told you have a family member on the way. And it, it can be shocking. Yes. Sometimes it can be shocking how some women can get pregnant very easily and others would struggle to... Charlie, to, to, Charlie. To, to, but easily. Paula, the, the thing is that we have to understand that in our society, I personally don't think that, I, I personally think that having a baby or getting someone pregnant mm -hmm. is very different from getting married to someone. You can as well get married to someone without really thinking that I want to have a baby with this person because the marriage is between the two of you. The baby is the product of your love, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That product might come along the way. It might never come along the way. It's about the two people in love and the two people trying to build a life together. Mm -hmm. That life might include a baby, right? Or it might include adopting a baby. So it's not, it's not that black and white that as soon as someone gets pregnant for you, should you should marry, marry that person. However, in our Ghanaian society, like we said before, the baby is something that brings two families together, together. in a way that goes even beyond marriage, mm -hmm. right? So it's like marrying is one step of bringing two families together, but once you get someone's daughter pregnant, yeah the families become automatically united in that sense in the in the cultural sense i, I don't remember the la i don't remember the last time a friend of mine had vodka in a club drinking whatever and then saw a lady and started calculating is this the woman i want to marry yeah. is this the okay. woman it won't, I want it to won't drop it won't. It won't no drop. at that, mo at that <laughs> moment at that so, moment you, you're very much in the moment of that moment yes. you know what i mean for yeah. recreational you're yeah. very very recreational you know <laughs> okay. so, you, so it's it's not that easy but right. women must mm. and I'm, I'm i'm a i'm a strong believer that it's fair that this government take steps to make contraceptives very, very affordable and free for women. In most countries... We should have, like, some sort free. of, like, but vending then, but machine that brings People don't know about it, but if you walk to government hospital, it's very cheap. Very cheap, Having yeah. to have the IUD, yeah. the implants, it's very cheap. People don't Fantastic. know about it. It's even cheaper than the emergency contraceptive that you spend a lot of money on. Wow. But then, gentlemen, before we wrap up the show, yeah. I know that Smart, you've got, you know, stage mm. play coming out. You want yes, to tell us about yes, it? Yes, yes. Um, I'm bringing out the wedding night. Last wedding year we night. did When Will You Marry Me? Yeah. And yeah, uh, now everybody's beginning to think I'm putting my marriage out there, but that's the, the funny <laughs> part. <laughs> so the wedding night is um, clearly is about Jephthah and Freema expecting, you know, to have a very good time on their wedding night. They arrive in their bedroom, rose petals on the bed, and they meet a very big surprise you know from both parties very very big surprise awesome. we are waiting to see what happens eventually on the day so the wedding night it's showing um on the 23rd of april uh, exactly about a month from now yeah. is going on at the paris door okay. yeah. but duke i also know that you've got amazing stuff going there yeah. from the coaching thing to your novel yeah yeah is, is, it, is it available on the market and uh, no not yet uh, we're still we're still working on some finishing touches on on that book um and we're expecting it to be out uh, by the close of this year or probably sooner than that, yeah. Please do out and give it to us, we beg. We well, <laughs> politicians, if I had interviewed the politicians, I'm going to give us a, a, a timeline. It's in the timeline. pipeline. It's, it's in, in the, the pipeline. It's, in the <laughs> <laughs> it's actually in the pipeline. I mean, it's a historical, um, historic fiction uh, novel. And it's, um, uh, it's around um, 1390. Uh, so wow. it's the late, late pre-colonial era. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, it's about 
it's, it's briefly about religious imposition and how Islam was um, um, imposed on uh, most of the northern tribes, northern Ghana tribe. The book itself is about um, the Songhai Empire, uh, the old, uh, I mean, the old, old Songhai Empire. And um, in Ghana, it, it, it encompasses the Gruma people, um, a bit of the, the, the Gomba people. Please, uh, please, the title yeah. again. The Half Moon. The Half Moon. Great. God. Please, but when, how can we connect with you? Smart. Yes, um, Facebook as Smart Teaching Nixon. Okay. And almost all my social media Smart channels, Smart Teaching Nixon. Smart Teaching Nixon. All right. Duke? Yes, it's Thomas Duke. Labeka Mankwando on all my social media platforms. Okay, great, great. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I must say, I love the conversation and all that. So, for my ladies who listen, you know, you should take a cue, especially the part where they're talking about the unplanned pregnancy. The vodka the day, in the other <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it's always a pleasure coming your way with Mons and Cuddles. And as I always say here, we find ways to spice up your relationship. So, whatever you put out here, you should, you know, take a cue and, you know, move forward with it. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back with the next episode of Moons and Cuddles. I am Paula Ama Brenny. Canadian dollars for the first transaction with the Sandy's Gaka Coffee download to Lemonade Finance. Welcome to the Ghana ICT Hub, a partnership between MTN Ghana and the Government of Ghana through the Ministry of Communications and Digitization. MTN pledged to support Ghana's digitization agenda in line with its ambition to lead the delivery of digital solutions for Africa's progress. In fulfillment of this pledge, MTN Ghana has committed $25 million toward the realization of the Ghana ICT Hub project. The objectives of the Ghana ICT Hub project is anchored on the following. To create an ICT-enabled environment for human capital and ICT skills development. To develop an ICT ecosystem through remote access delivery to facilitate job creation for national development. To provide a modern, state-of-the-art physical infrastructure to serve as a pillar for the digital Ghana agenda. The physical infrastructure, when completed, will provide 4,000 square meters of space with the following facilities. Laboratories for technology training and research. Innovation hub co-working spaces for tech innovation startups, tier 3 data center, conferencing facilities, offices and meeting rooms, commercial lettable spaces, gaming area, restaurant and celery facilities. The technology laboratories will be fitted with the next generation ICT equipment and applications to provide the youth of Ghana with practical training in industry 4.0 technologies such as artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, cloud computing, 3D printing, robotics, Internet of Things, IoT, advanced manufacturing techniques, cybersecurity, genetic engineering. The project also seeks to establish a complete ecosystem at the hub through remote access delivery to facilitate job creation for national development. The ecosystem shall comprise of MDAs, technology companies, startups, incubators, research agencies, leading universities globally, foundations worldwide, 
to create a community. 1. The ecosystem community shall bridge the divide between academia and industry and provide solutions to challenges in the key sectors of health, agriculture, and educational sectors of the economy. 2. It shall also run an innovation program providing mentoring and networking for the youth in tech startups. 3. The ecosystem community shall establish an innovation fund to support startups, research agencies, and other entities in the ecosystem. MTN Ghana and the Ministry of Communications and Digitization are championing the Ghana Digital Agenda for Ghana's development. Welcome to the Digital Age. I want you so bad, I'll fuck like a, I want you I wanna say yes, I can't resist I want you Ooh, I want wow. you off a cracker I want you so bad, I'll fuck like have <laughs> a goodness rich in milk and butter in alpha cracker yummy and deliciously crunchy alpha crackers simply irresistible this advert is md approved hey you may be a year you ma it was said the one because i'll be so more Ubesomo this is the hustler story. Go Ghana! Are you struggling to pay your huge rent advance? Do you wish to pay your rent on a monthly basis? Then good news is here! The government of Ghana has introduced the National Rental Assistance Scheme to help Ghanaians, especially the youth, pay for their rent on a monthly basis. To qualify, an applicant must show proof of the following minimum requirements. Be a Ghanaian. Possess a valid Ghana card. You must be an adult of 18 years and above. Have a verifiable employment or end income. To apply, visit www.nras.gov.gh. The scheme is currently operational in the following regions Greater Accra Region, Ashanti Region, Eastern Region, Western Region, Bono East Region, and the Northern Region. For further inquiries, contact 0551 341 515 or 0550 